Uh, mainline TV. Symbol. Hi, folks. Welcome for it, McDermott. Um, Take off that shirt. Uh, welcome, everybody. I'm Dan McDermott. Welcome to Google Plus Week, an unofficial look at the world's coolest social network. Uh, tonight, we have Natalie Valalabos, the community manager for Google Plus. She'll be joining us in about an hour, a little more than that, maybe. The, they're running a little late, but um, uh, we got a lot of stuff to talk about. So first, let me get to the panel. Let's introduce these folks. We have uh, on the left, Mr. Craig Ship. Craig, welcome, sir. Hello. Um, I say left just for direction, trust me. And then we have uh, in California, Dr. Gary Levin. Welcome, doctor. Jason Hello. Salas. Hello. In Guam, Jason Salas from KUM-TV. Welcome, Jason. Hey, hey, Dan. Hey, everybody. Good to see you guys. Uh, big show tonight and a lot, a lot of big surprises we have to reveal to you. So make sure to stay tuned because tonight is going to be wild. He's awesome. Um, he doesn't. You can't hardly see him, but he's he's awesome. In uh, Augusta, Georgia, <laughs> Mr. Michael Banks, welcome, sir. Hola. Um, in Menifee, California, Pam Adger, welcome, Pam. Always a pleasure. Hi, Dan. Hi, everyone. And Sheila B. Dubois joins us. Hi. From West Jordan, Utah. How many YouTube subscribers do you have? Only have seventy-six. Okay, so you need thirty-four by the end of the show. Or more. So everyone. Or more. That's your YouTube channel. My Angel on a Wing, mm -hmm. and uh, please subscribe to Sheila's channel. Anybody else trying to get live streaming and, and don't have 100 yet? This guy. Yeah. Michael, how many you got? I got like seven. Oh, okay. That's all? <laughs> <laughs> so you've been feverishly promoting your uh, YouTube page. So what's your YouTube um, URL? Um, it's youtube.com slash user slash Mr. Mike Banks. Mr. Mike Banks, or you could just find him on Google Plus and click to YouTube from there. Either way, yep. uh, he's uh, google.com slash plus Michael Banks to get to him um, on Google Plus. Okay, so we have, uh, we have some cool stuff to talk about. Uh, first up, I want to explain what we're doing here. This is a YouTube live stream instead of the normal hangout on air. And uh, we did a test earlier. I've, I've done one with Craig, and I did one with... Um, uh, Jason earlier, uh, and it worked pretty well. So, a regular hangout is about. I know we're going to get questions. How, how? What am I doing? So, Jason and I thought we would discuss this. So, let me go to Jason, and um, we did a test. This is similar to what you guys do, right? On uh, on TV, where you have a, a, a switcher. Um, mm -hmm. So, I will. Um, okay, there we go. Uh, there we are. All right, so Jason, I'm screwing up. Um, I have uh, f several shots, and, and I'm using a switcher, and I'm going to show you guys what we're doing. So right now I have a double shot with me and Jason, and then I have a F1 that's just me, F3 is just Jason, F4 is the entire Hangout or video chat computer. And that's on a laptop. I'm bringing that in via HDMI. So I'll show you what my, my screen looks like. My left screen is um, that's got the YouTube live control thing 
telling me that everything's fine. I'm within the parameters. And then on my other screen, now this is going to be confusing or it's going to be screwy. So just kind of look where my, my mouse is. And that is, excuse me, that's the left screen. That's where my YouTube live control panel is. It's telling us uh, what's going on. Um, it says we've got 24 viewers right now. And then here, if you look at the bottom here, these are my shots. Blank screen and the opening slide, with the, which is the, this picture with Natalie. And then the opening with the music. And then me, both of us, just them. And then laptop full screen. I got hotkeys F1, 2, 3, 4, so I can quickly switch here. And then I, I'm currently clicked on my right screen, which is uh, this program, which is called Open Broadcaster Software. And I, I have Wirecast as well, but that is a resource hog compared to this. And this basically does everything. So I'm going to hit F1, go back to me. Um, so if you guys have any questions about this, I'll be happy to answer them. It sounds terribly easy to do. It's terribly easy to do. It's easier <laughs> than Wirecast. It does everything Wirecast does, in my opinion. Um, it's, uh, I love it. It's fantastic. Now, now, I have a live streaming question that maybe you or some of the viewers can answer. I've been playing around with it a little bit the last couple of I guess he does have an issue. Yeah. Was Dan Dan sharing his screen? Because I didn't see anything at all. Yeah, I'm seeing the live show and he's sharing his stream and it's like a continual Okay, so back, I Craig? got bounced Go out. Okay, now he's back. Go ahead, Craig. Okay, so yeah, that's happened to me a couple times actually, bouncing out of hangouts. But um, I try the live stream, and it works the first time I try it. I got Wirecast, and you know, you set up the event, you you start broadcasting Wirecast, then you go, and then it sees the feed coming from uh, Wirecast, right? And then you can start your broadcast. Well, what happens is I start the broadcast, I do a broadcast, a, a test for a couple of minutes, and then I try to do it again and it says it doesn't see the feed coming from Wirecast. And no matter what I do, I can restart Wirecast, I can restart my browser, I can set a new event, I can do whatever I want, and it won't see the feed coming from Wirecast the second time. And um, I just can't figure out what would be causing that. I don't know. Uh, guys, a uh, couple of you told me to raise my mic volume. Tell me if this is okay and not overmodulated. Um, I would, uh, I don't know, that's a, Wirecast is not, I'm not, sh I'm not sure. YouTube is not seeing the Wirecast feed coming to it. I don't know, I'd have to diagnose that. Um, okay, I uh, just figured yeah. if somebody else had run into that problem, they, I don't you know. know. Okay. Um, okay, so Caddius, let me know if I got the mic thing fixed. Hopefully I have. So, uh, any other questions on this? So just just for the uh, for the edification of viewers out there, Dan, exactly what resolution are we operating at? Uh, 1280 by 720. Now I did a 1080p test. It's mm -hmm. 6,000 kilobits per second, but um, it was a bit shaky, and I couldn't tell an image quality difference at full screen between the 720 and the 1080. So I decided to just do it at 720, and then I've got you know uh, some room. So I'm shooting four 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 megabits per second or 4,000 kilobits per second to YouTube, and then um, the Hangout's about 800 kilobits, and then I got another, you know, megabyte or so, megabit or so to play around, you know, for regular, uh, regular stuff. So, Very I like cool. it. It's fun, and this is like what we used to do when I first started out. What I would do is uh, I'd stream on Justin TV, and I used Blog Talk Radio, and it was called McDermott Report. That was before Google Plus Week. And then Google Plus started, and so I was still doing the radio thing. And like when Alan would, he'd call an 800 number to talk to me, and then I'd put his picture, superimpose his picture next to me, or full screen, just like I'm doing your video now, right? Or side by side, I just have a static picture. If you look at the older shows on my other channel, Daniel P. McDermott YouTube channel, then um, so now I'm back to that, and it just got Wirecast. It was just, it, it was. It wasn't reliable. It wasn't, and this is the first first show I've done using this uh, the new approach. So I'll see how it does. And there are things I like, like the Hangout. If I, I think if I logged in with an Apps account, 
a paid apps account, I could have up to 15 people in it. It's the Hangouts not taking up any of the resources of the streaming computer and bringing it in via HDMI. We could go 36 hours, um, but it'll only record four. So we can still only go four hours. So you could record four, stop, and start another recording right away, right? No, I mean, you'd have to start a whole new live stream. So you can't do the comments, the embedded comments thing that you guys were doing before with this, can you? Sure. You can load the comment tracker, I think, can't you? Not not the comment tracker, the one where where the you guys app? saw. Yes. Correct. We cannot do that. Okay. Um, so if... But this is a test. I think I like this better, but we'll, when we play it back, and what do you guys think? Um, well, right now it's live on, on YouTube, but it's not live on your stream. It's both. Is it? It's, it's on my stream, yes. it, the YouTube Let's live player, it. and the, it's also in the event. Um, oh, in the event, but not on your main page. Yeah. Well, he could post it there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, he just shared it. He started it. He just shared it. Never mind. Yeah, so we're good. Okay. All right, so... Okay. Um, but, Dan, just to clarify, you could stop this live stream, and then you could create another event, or you could have already created another event and had it in the queue. Yes. And then you could just start broadcasting again. Yeah, and you'll see that and sometimes with events. Yeah, and the Hangout could just stay like it is. You just start a new live sure, stream. Sure, sure. In fact, I could have several events lined up, right? Yeah. And then I yeah. could, um, I would just have to stop the streaming and then, you know, that sort of thing. I see, Craig, I see Craig's gear spinning in his head. He's getting ideas. Unfortunately, this is only Windows software. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, no, for Wirecast, don't they, don't they, have, an, uh, don't they have a Mac OS version? Yeah, He's not Wirecast using does. Wirecast. Yeah. He's not using You it. could do the exact same thing I'm doing with Wirecast if you have a souped up computer. And Craig oh, okay. does. Craig's got a Mac Pro. Uh, it's the current generation, not the new one, but it's, it's more than capable of doing this, I think, Craig, because you've done some testing, right? Well, yeah, I'm sure, it, I'm sure it could do it, but like I say, the problem I'm having is with the live streaming period. Um, so I don't know what's going on with that. Yeah. I'll figure that out. Okay, so um, what we'll do now is what I'd like to do is load up the comment tracker with um, Natalie's post with the other stuff. We're not using, there was a question about the um, questions that we're not using that tonight because this is not a HOA, this is um, a YouTube live stream. So what I'll do is, uh, let's go to- I our, have I have your share, my share, and the YouTube um, in the comment tracker oh, right okay. now. Um, okay, so uh, are there any co comments on this topic that we should throw up there, Pam? That you're aware of, and if so, if not, we'll we'll go on to the second. Um... Uh, well, there is there is one really uh, poignant point made by Andrew Jones McGuire, uh, who posts on YouTube, and he says, "I missed the Hangouts question app from last week, which was a really interesting front end. Uh, that, of course, if you're watching this show and you're watching <laughs> any any other Hangout on air live, uh, you can actually send questions, and they're they're trying it out right now with a limited number of hangouts. Uh, so Dan, what, why is that not possible? Because that is a, a hangout on air app and what we're doing now is we're doing a YouTube live stream so they're similar but different and the reason I'm trying this is the quality is, is better. Uh, there, there are two factors in video quality. One is the actual number of pixels uh, and hangouts on air are 720, but that's the entire screen. The top box is about 480, so it's really 480 blown up to 720. And also the, the kilobits per second is about um, 800 with a hangout on air, or it, uh, for any person, whereas the here the stream is 4000. So you can tell the difference, like here's Michael at about 800 kilobits per second, and then here's me at 4000. So there's a, a dramatic quality difference in the two. And so this is an experiment. I, I used to do this using Justin TV and Ustream before that. Um, so this is this is an experiment, and we'll see so, what happens. So why did you not do this as a Hangout on air so that you could have the questions app and all that? Is because of bandwidth? Because the Hangout on air is 800 kilobits per second, and this is I wanted 4,000. 
I want to. No, no. What I mean is, this hangout that we're in right now could be a hangout on air, and you could still be capturing this and sending it to the live stream. Correct? Then I'd have two separate versions of the show simultaneously running. That's right. But what would that matter? Why would that matter? I don't know. You'd get you'd gain the questions app. The only downside is you'd be having two broadcasts going on your uplink, and so your bandwidth, right, might be an issue. Not really, because I'm going to hang out anyway, right? This video call takes up the same. Bandwidth same as, as hang out on air. Way, I would guess. Yeah, maybe it does. Sure. Well, then you should try that test next time. I can. I like the hangout be regular video call because I never pop up. Like right now, if I because I'm talking. My image would be up there where you are, whereas um, now in a regular video call that's not an HOA, I will never pop up in the screen. And and the alternative and, and before I used to do do that, and I would have to blue box everybody the entire show if I was going to talk, and that's a hassle. I like the automatic switching. So there's pros and cons, and we'll get feedback from you guys watching. There's about 30 of you so far, and you know let us know what you think. So uh, what I'll do now is I'm going to go, let's go to our second topic, and I'll let um, uh, Jason do this while I load the things in my comment tracker. So go ahead, Jason, take it away. This is about the Chromecast. Okay, so, yeah, so the next uh, topic is the HOA live hack that we discussed last week. I'm, admittedly, I'm kind of like, I'm kind of confused. What, what exactly is this live hack? Okay, what it is, uh, Ronnie ben uh, or I guess Alan talked about it, and then Ronnie posted about it on his blog. Uh, what, you, what you could, so it's, I guess it's broken, you said? It doesn't work anymore? It was just a glitch. It, it doesn't work anymore. Okay, so what, what it was is you could, uh, um, you could start an, a Hangout on Air, and, and before you broadcast, I think this is what it is. You go to your, you go, if you have YouTube Live, you can go get the live control panel, and um, that looks like, uh, I'm not going to mess with it because I might screw something up. But <laughs> what you could do is you could um, mark it as a private video, not public, and then, um, or unlisted, and then monitor your post when you click broadcast immediately delete the post then nobody would see it I think yep. that's basically the gist of yeah. it right yep. mm -hmm. but um, I guess it doesn't work now no no not now what do you guys uh, what do you think of this what do you think of the I'm guessing that the reason they don't let you do private or limited audience hangouts on air is because why should they pay I'm thinking they're thinking I'm, I'm, my guess of their thinking would be why go to the expense of giving you free streaming if we can't monetize it right I think it's also a privacy issue because um I mean whenever you do a hangout on air everyone knows hey you're about to be record this is gonna be streamed to the public but if you're able to do this with a private hangout then you could be recorded and not even know it you don't there's no opt-in so whoever comes in the hangout might not know they're being recorded what well, they would. You if you're still you're still doing an HOA on you know a hangout on air. But but you're off air. They don't know. Well, I mean. Oh, via the live event. Ah, I don't know. I don't know. I I'll be curious to see how that works when I get enough. Jason, what do you think about it? Well, basically, long story short, is there's still clearly a lot of work that has to be done to properly integrate Hangouts proper with YouTube Live as it's now being you know rolled out, um, and the event system. I know the event system. People have you know. I remember when it went live that one day, everybody was creating a, like an event for every single thing under the sun. It's like, hey, I'll be watching my dog uh, sign up for a live event, and then people were trying to integrate live events with Hangouts and. Um, it can be kind of unintuitive in certain degrees um, and in, in certain ways. Uh, so there's a lot of work that they have to, have to do to completely streamline the whole thing and like let people know exactly how to do these things really easily. Um, you can see where it's going though and this is, you know, like we've talked about before, Hangouts, for me personally, it's starting to really replace traditional telephony 
And for the purposes of this show, you know, it's we now have the production capability to actually make this rival, you know, a a full blown TV show. But the thing, the thing with events, yeah, there's, I mean, there's a lot of work that needs to be done to make events, you know, like really, really seamless. I agree. Yeah, I just think it's just a feature they haven't added yet. I, I don't think it's that they don't want us to do private, in effect, on hair or limited hangouts to where, let's say, I s share it to just a circle or, or whatever. Um, I mean, my gosh, we can upload a two hour long video to YouTube and make it private. So it's not like they're worried about giving us that bandwidth and that capability for any other video that we upload. So I just think it's a feature that they haven't added yet. And maybe they took that back doorway out just because they didn't want that getting around that, you know, how to do it and have people go in there and and hacking their way through it. And but but I think I've I've heard them kind of indicate that this is something that they know is on the wish list and and wait and see type of thing. I don't think they've ever said we're not going to do it. I think it. I think they're going to do it. It's just a question of when. Okay. Here, here's another use case. I mean, I know here's one Craig might like. If I do the same thing, and you know, don't set it to private, but let's say I set it so the NSA people can listen in on our hangout, but you don't know who I shared it to, but a regular HOA, you know, it's public. Well, but like I say, if if when the people go in to the Hangout, better safe than sorry, just have everybody acknowledge, just like they do now, that it's a Hangout on air, whether it is or isn't. doesn't make any difference. Let them acknowledge because it has the capability of being that way. And somebody can always change the privacy setting down the road on the video. That's what I was going to ask. Anyway. That's um, what I was going to ask. Yeah, can you so, do that? Yeah. So just, just cover your bases and just have everybody acknowledge that this is a public thing and if the broadcaster chooses to limit it then that's up to him but everybody's already acknowledged that you know that it could be out to everybody yep then they cover their bases um yeah i'm Jeffy, still looking forward to seeing the just the regular hangouts recordable on youtube to a private you know you can close them I think that's going to be even, even more of an issue because, like, no one owns a regular hangout. No one's in charge. Or no one, like, who decides whose video is going to go where? Or, like, oh, once you leave, does the well, video I, stop? And then, I mean, it's a lot of technical stuff. I mean, they need to yeah, fix Yeah, but that. it would be, it'd be nice, you know, if you were doing these, like, little class. Let's say I was teaching crochet, you know? Hypothetically. Um, <laughs> hypothetically. <laughs> um... You know, it would be nice to have, like, the lessons for the crochet circle. You know, if only nine people can join, then they can, then the other people can still, I can share it to my circle, and they can have access to it. That would be kind of cool. Now, as far as strategic direction, what do you, where do you guys think they're going with this? Because, you know, are we going to have almost like schizophrenia? Because it's like, okay, well, I want to do a video production, and if I, you know, if I'm a complete newbie, to the whole Google ecosystem, you know, I know that there's this YouTube thing and I know that there's this Hangout thing. Um, how do I start and how do I go about this? That's a because great I question. Would, because I would think I would, you know, I would, honestly, I think I would be confused. Well, there are people like Ronnie Bincer who are already working on stuff and they regularly post on how to do things like that. I mean, you just need to yeah. find him I think know that, that he's the, there. I think that creating a Hangout on air is pretty straightforward at this point. I mean, you go down the menu on the left side, you you go into that section, and there's the big you know blue button to start a hangout on air. Now, if somebody doesn't know what a hangout on air is, then yeah, it's a problem. But if they know what and that it, well, is, yeah. and that's pretty straightforward, I think. Well, again, do you, do you think that now that they're starting to build out YouTube, and they're finally, after so many years, you know, really starting to integrate YouTube with the larger <laughs> Google product? Um, is Hangouts, as it's been rebranded since Google I.O. this year, you know, it is the ultimate destination for Hangouts to actually move towards YouTube. And anything we do that we broadcast either publicly or privately will filter towards YouTube. And then Hangouts is going to be known as the chat client, you know, the, mes the messaging client, and then, and then yeah. its own thing. Sure. I don't think... I, I, know, I, don't, I don't know. I'm just speculating. I because think you know. YouTube is going to move towards Google+. Plus. I think it's going to be the opposite. I'll okay. integrate well, no, it because, because as it looks right now, it, it would seem like, you know, from the outside, not for, you know, 
people like us that are really into this stuff and we, we live and breathe it every day, but it <laughs> would seem like Hangouts is competing with YouTube in that regard. <laughs> I mean, that way, sort of, but I mean, I've seen more and more the last few months that YouTube has been integrating so many things into Google+. Plus. Now, I know YouTube being sort of a standalone thing, it's got its own identity, being soaked up in the Google+, Plus, which I think all the other products have been doing. Like, everything is just becoming Google+, Plus, becoming that extra social layer, but YouTube probably should be soaked up in the Google+, Plus, but I think it's too huge of an identity to do that in any way, and I think they're trying to force feed it into Google+, Plus, and I don't know that fine balance, but Hangouts overall in general has been confusing to me, even though I understand how it works, but it's forever changing, the identity of Hangouts and the new talk and Hangout integration, how that working is changing, how Hangouts has been. I mean, it's just interesting. I just see more and more of YouTube turning into Google+, Plus. the identities, well, the videos, yeah. everything. I'll tell you why I think it, YouTube should move to, more, more towards Google+. Plus. I'll give you a perfect example. We're doing this show right now, and when we finish this show, if we choose to, we can each share this to our Google+, Plus page, and the same video, the one video, can be, in effect, shared a whole bunch of places. And YouTube isn't set up that way right now. YouTube is, is set up, if Michael uploads a, a video to his YouTube channel, it's on his YouTube channel and his YouTube channel only. Um, if Jason wants it on his, he's got to upload it, download it, and then upload it separately to his YouTube channel. Now, you can put it in a playlist, and there's other things that you can do, but it's not really set up like a database, like a shared like database. Like a drive? Like a drive? <laughs> yeah, and, and so w where I see they should head with this is more like more like um, this video goes up, and even though Dan was the broadcaster, all of us were in the video. If we choose, we should be able to just add it right into our YouTube channel, almost like, as if it's one of our vid own videos. That's, that's not a bad idea. And using that analogy, it reminds me of photos. I mean, like, if you are in an event and it has a photo, you automatically have a little section, hey, you're tagged in this photo, so this photo is under your profile as well. That's right. Absolutely. So they Absolutely. could take the same thing with video, but I mean, yes, that would be harder to do. And I mean, YouTube has its own, it's its own thing. It's yeah, huge. but I think that's the direction they've got ahead in order for this to all to really make sense. Yeah. Now, the other thing that's interesting is, you know, like we, we've talked about the plusification, like as Michael was just saying, um, of, you know, products Everything. with Google Plus <laughs> onto, yeah, acro across Google's product line. But the one thing that also, in terms of data liberation, which is always a big thing, and the ability to actually take your data if you move away from Google or to Google, like with Facebook, it used to be hard as heck, you know, take all of the, the pictures in your photo gallery away. You can't really do that with video because imagine trying to download, you know, how many gigs would that be if you're a really hardcore video producer? But you can. It just would be a lot of space and a lot of hassle and a long wait. But right it, now yeah, I can go to takeout and pull out my YouTube videos if I wanted to. But I mean, mm -hmm. who would it's do not that? as easily done. Well, it's easy. It's just who would do it? Yeah. I go to take out right now and check out all my YouTube stuff. It's simple. It's just long, and I wouldn't do it. Well, once you have uh, gigabit internet, <laughs> then it wouldn't be that big an issue. And everything goes back to fiber. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, for, those of, for those of us who do not live in Kansas City and or Austin and or Provo, Utah, like really, really big college towns, by the way. Well, I'm not in Provo, but I'm in West Jordan. Does that count? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you can get some uh, some fringe coverage. I don't know if it. You, if you tell us. Does is the Google Fiber going to reach out there? I doubt it. Some of the excess, all the excess <laughs> bandwidth, just you know, just falls out there that way. I wish. <laughs> well, we've got a glass hole in the Hangout. <laughs> and it begins. <laughs> Craig, Craig serves. You're on Alan. mute, Alan. Yeah. We've got you muted now. So wait a minute, Craig, you've got glass? Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Here, let me, let me put on my Google Glass. I've got the new model, the trim, the trim model. See, you see <laughs> the camera. <laughs> Alan, we were just talking about the um, HOA live hack being stopped. That's what we were talking about. We were talking about what? The HOA live hack being stopped. Stop working. 
Yeah. Yeah. On I Google Glass. Surprised. You know, I, I'm wondering mm -hmm. if uh, it was really stopped or if the UI was is blocking it. Well, this, this is my version of Google Glass. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I think we will. Uh, there, there is still some more experimenting and some more work to do with it. Real, so we'll real see quick. See what actually happens. Real quick, just just for anyone who's non-techie like me, what does UI mean? UI is user interface. It's it's the in this in this particular case, it's the the dashboard control or the control panel ah. that was there um, that's now preventing it from from happening. Got it. Um, but there happens to be an API, and will it, it remains to be seen if they blocked the API or if they just blocked the UI. And Michael's laughing. Oh yeah, that's funny. When it's funny that I don't know what UI means. No, or? it's funny when you when Alan brings up things about APIs and things being blocked, and you know things you no, can't. I, I use haven't been. APIs. I haven't been paying much attention lately. But Alan, you know when the glass first came out, people were saying that that. People look goofy wearing them and so on and all this. I, of course, I said the opposite right out of the shoot. I said I thought you, they look really cool. You you did uh, say the opposite. I will. Now, uh, I will what are people that. What are people saying now? What What are you hearing about? And and what, and you said initially when you were running into people in real life, they thought they really looked cool. So you were getting the opposite reaction too. What What's going on now? Same thing. Everyone, most people that I'm meeting think they look pretty cool. Um, and we're talking normal everyday folk. We're not talking people who live inside a tech bubble. You know, we're we're talking people on the street. We're talking people I work with. We're talking just people I happen to run into on a daily basis. I have not found anyone yet that thinks they, or at least have not said to my face that they look dorky. Yeah, yeah. And I'll tell you, it's interesting. I get the same thing in person with the Segway. Also, people, people think that it's cool. They want to ride it, you know. They're they're they think it's it, useful. I mean, I want to ride one. it so bad, Craig. I I swear, <laughs> I wish I was close enough to you. <laughs> Did you Craig, say, Pam, Pam, you, you want to you want to ride the Segway? Is that the Segway? The Segway. Oh, here's a comment the for segue. Craig. Here's a comment for Craig. Going back to the YouTube thing about everybody being attributed to like a video. It's like um, Jeffrey Hellman says, Craig, you're blurring the lines of content ownership. Going with the ideal of everyone having their own portion of the video. Absolutely, absolutely. Asked, I mean, Jeffrey why asked not? A, Jeffrey why also not? asked a question about the encoders or something. If he's going to. No, I can see that working if that was, uh, you know, the way they do with the music that's already licensed, and you do like music in a YouTube video, it tags like them and they get credit for it. But like, if it put a copy of the video in everyone else's profile that was in the video. And all the ads go back to the owner. Then I think they would be happy about that. But I mean, if you could monetize all the videos in your profile that go towards you. That would be right. By the way, talking about ownership, do we know really who owns, for example, this video? Uh, it's under Dan, isn't it? Yeah, but does he really own it? Yeah, absolutely. That's uh, in there, the there, terms of service. Can you monetize the Hangout on Air? Well, or, I mean, there, yeah, well, yeah, but I'm not talking about monetizing, and I'm talking about who actually owns this content. Does YouTube own it? No. Does no. Dan own it? I, I mean, own it. Actually, and I really own owns responsibility. It. I, I'm the one they're going to sue, right? If if, if I were using something, yeah. you know. Craig, copyright law is incredibly clear on this point. Okay. Dan is, without a doubt, the owner of this material. He's the copyright holder on it. Now he's granted YouTube pretty much an unlimited license. Um, but that is a license to YouTube from Dan. This is actually a, an incredibly important point in copyright law in general, and I'm sure a copyright lawyer would be able to, to clarify some of this. Um, but and he basically, owns it because why? Because he's making it. Because he started the Hangout. Because he started. He is the content creator. He is the person who is affixing it into a permanent form. He's the glue. And he's not being paid to do it by somebody else. And that is because none of us are challenging that and saying, no, we're really the content creator. I mean, how would you challenge that? How? I don't know. I'm, I'm being devil's advocate here. That's not even devil's advocate. There's no I way. Just wanted, I just wanted to point out that, that further to that last comment, I'm pleased as punch 
that we have a Blurred Lines reference on the show. <laughs> yeah, I thought of that, too. <laughs> for, the, for those of you who are Robin Thicke fans. For the young kids in the house. Yeah. So, Jason, you're in broadcasting. I mean, do you, are, do you think that Dan owns all rights to this broadcast? I, I do, because, I mean, you know, uh, he's the person who creates the content. He uploads it to a channel that he has registered um, with his own profile. So um, uh, when I was working in the ISP business, we did a fair amount of work at that point when the Digital Millennium Copyright Act came out. And um, part of what that act says is that if you're an ISP like like I was working you know if people transmit certain types of information you know if they if people publish web pages about how to um, create a bomb or about how to you know do things that are um, of an immoral or illegal fashion as an I as, as the ISP I'm only considered a conduit of the content I can't be you know legally liable for that look uh, here's the deal this is just like if Jason's TV st station um, if, if Jason said, Dan, we want to talk to you, whatever, and stuck a camera in my face and interviewed me and then used it on their commercial news production, they would own the content. I couldn't go back and say, I want the money from the ads on that segment. And they don't have to get me to sign any agreement. Um, they typically would get, because that's a journalism issue. And you can make the same case here. Now, a, a television show, like I was on Real Housewives of D.C., and... Um, uh, they gave me a form, which I didn't sign, but they used me anyway. But it was a, 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 you know, a thing that I wouldn't, you know, that they own the rights to everything and all that stuff, because that wasn't really a journalistic endeavor. That was um, more, you know, that was a, a reality TV show. And so uh, many people that, Jason, that are on Jason's news have no desire at all. I mean, if someone robs a bank and they put their mugshot on the news, they don't want, even want to be on the news. Um, and they can't claim ownership of the news broadcast because, you know, they use their image. I mean, this, that's, this is the exact same okay, thing. Okay, so if you go into Jason's studio and you do a show out of there and you have all of us on and you do a Google Plus week, that will be is stipulated that still, in a contract. do you still own that show? You, yeah. you own, Dan would own the content, but, but I, as the TV uh, not entity, if it was, we would, Not if it we was work for hire, Jason. No, if, no, I mean, we, would, if, we would put a disclaimer at the bottom and we're like, you know, um, Dan's opinions and thoughts do not necessarily reflect the opinions and thoughts of our management and ownership. But if you hired me to do a program, like, like you, for example, well, look, look at Jason. Jason is paid by KUAM to anchor the news at 6 o'clock uh, or whatever time it is. Um, and uh, he doesn't have any copyright claim on that. That's work for hire. Now, if he, it's all, sti these are stipulated agreements. For example, my newspapers... Um, if I hire a reporter, then I own that content uh, from the news that they write for me because I'm paying them to write it. If I get a King Features column and run that, then I don't. I, I, I have the right to use it in my paper, um, but I don't own the copyright. I couldn't use it. You know, only I've paid for the right to republish it. So the, you know, that would be stipulated in an agreement. So, so if that's the case, if if we own this content that we're uploading to YouTube, lock, stock, and barrel, and we're just giving YouTube, in effect, a license to use it, it would seem like to me that YouTube can't just willy-nilly delete the video without giving us a chance to download content that we own and, Why did you and take save 10 it and preserve to get to this? it. Why did you go around this 10 minutes before you landed, Craig? Well, no, I'm just giving an example here. I'm just giving an example of why I think that it might not be 100% correct. Because they're not, no, they're, they're not required. They're not, uh, well, tell you, they, tell you what, everything you would, like, you would ever want to know about intellectual property can be thoroughly found at your local library. Well, How about we actually, talk about some Google topics? Go ahead, Gary had a question. And, and, uh, the uh, well, problem what here. about does Google, does Google have a, a EULA, and what about a Creative Commons license? Does that apply in this venue at all? Uh, yes, and and yes, but optional. Yes, they have an end user agreement, a, a terms of service agreement, um, which means they can in fact delete something if if they get a strike or if they find it offensive. Although they didn't delete that crazy Muslim video, that so obviously they're not you know prone to uh, willy nilly delete stuff. But um, they have the right to delete something if if they choose. I, you know. Well, then, hang on. Let let. let you're playing a little fast and loose with the words, and it's understandable why, but it's not so much that they have the right. It's that you've given them the right as part of your service agreement. 
So as, yeah, as part of what you agreed to do, says in there, it probably even cautions the content creator to keep a co another copy of their content. Right. I don't know if it specifically does that, but what it does say is, and, and I have not read it in a while, so I, and I have not committed it to memory, but I would assume that it says something like you're granting YouTube the right to take any action, of, you know, any any legal action that is appropriate. You know, you're giving them the right to maintain it, and they're not guaranteeing you that they're going to keep a copy of it. Sure. So in that sense, yes, it is absolutely your content, but you've given them permission to do certain things to it. Now, whether you remember that you did that or not is another question, of course. But even in writing, it's not true. And really good content it is. And as really good content, let's move on to our next subject. What yeah, because I was going to say, a lot of this deals with broadcast. And broadcast, speaking of Chromecast, is actually our next topic. Clever segue. Uh, what you guys may have noticed is CNET actually came out with an interesting report. Because earlier this week, um, everybody was in a kerfuffle. Because people that ordered the Chromecast, um, I was one of them. Um, I actually ordered mine the day it actually came out, but a, a few hours after uh, Amazon and possibly some other retailers, namely Google Play and, uh, or actually I don't think Google Play ran out yet, uh, but Best Buy. Uh, when I ordered mine on Amazon, it was a few hours after uh, the presentation, but they had already ran out. So I was like, okay, I'll wait for a few weeks. Earlier this week, uh, many people like myself got an email that said uh, the back order was pretty significant and that we would not receive ours and it would not be shipped until sometime around Halloween, maybe the last week of um, yeah. October, first week of yeah, November. Yeah, that's what I got. Yeah. CNET actually uh, broke a story a few hours ago, and they actually said that Amazon admitted that, um, I guess they said their, their shipping estimates were in error, and they now said that uh, everybody should be getting them in the next few weeks if you were informed that it was going to be a while. So, like, I just got an email maybe, like, two hours ago from Amazon, and it said mine is actually supposed to come in on August 20th now. So August, October, you know, there's not. Yeah, too I've been getting. There. I've gotten actually several emails from Amazon, and each one has a different story to tell. That's like I'm looking at them now. Like if you go right now to Amazon, it says usually ships between two and three months. But if you go to Google Play, I mean, it says two to three weeks. But like, that's why I try to keep it with Play. But I mean, if you bought Amazon, they had it. I mean, you never know. I guess. Yeah, but if you're not on Android, you can't do Google Play unless you pay to use Google Play. Well, all you It'll need is a Google account to order from Play. It'll be interesting at the end of the quarter to if they give the numbers of how many actually sold. And see, this is where we this is where we really disagreed last week because I I believe that they should maybe come out in the first few weeks and just say, you know, we realize that everybody knows. Um, this thing sold out in every single venue it was it was available. This is what we're doing, and this is historic because no other product, and granted it's a $35 HDMI dongle, has had this much sales velocity of sales. Now, Craig and Allen both said they should maybe wait for the quarter and just do it all well, like I, a, I, well, like a roll-up thing in the aggregate. No, I, think they should wait, I think they should either wait for the quarter, at which point they'll get, you know, analysts, you know, will will be, you know, slathering over themselves talking about how Google is, you know, obviously the, the next big thing and is out appling Apple. Or they should wait until the until November, at which point they'll be able to say, "Hey, we sold X quadrillion uh, Chromecast. It is obviously going to be the hottest item this Christmas." Now, what's really okay, important for people to understand, got, though, Craig, is um, that I have my Chromecast and Craig Ship does not. Yeah, that, so, that's the important so takeaway. So here's the this. deal on that, Jason. This is actually what I said. If you go back and rewind the tape and replay it. <laughs> is if they sold a lot of units, and I'm saying a big if, they should come out with it. They what is the lot? Come out. What is the lot? Should, yeah. uh, a million, two million, anything like that. Um, they should come out and say, in the first day, we sold a million of these units. We had no That's idea the they would sell this They're rapidly. They're going to say we that. Apologize. We're doing the best we can to fill additional orders. Um, yeah, we were just taken by surprise. You know, be honest about it. Now, if in fact they didn't make that many because Google's not very good at manufacturing and they always have this problem where they can't get units out, if they only sold let's say 200,000, then I'd remain quiet on it because that's kind of embarrassing. The rumor I heard was 700,000. 
That was yeah, the that's, rumor. That's what we got. That's what we got from from Dan's source. That was then confirmed by nobody. That was then reported by both the main Twit show, and also in This Week in Google as as verbatim fact. And that was then extrapolated on to say that okay, since Amazon sold 500 to 700 thousand, then Google Play probably sold at least twice that many. So they probably sold two or three million in the first day. And so we went from having no information whatsoever, as, excuse me, as to how many they sold, to all of a sudden we think they sold two million. And the fact is, we have no idea. They could have sold ten thousand of these things. We have no idea. Andrew Jones McGuire makes a good point. At least you guys will eventually get the Chromecast. Out the rest of the world. Dot, 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 the rest dot. of the world might get them the same time we get them. <laughs> well, no, no, <laughs> really. To be fair, though, uh, Alan got the Nexus Q at I/O. And that was sort of a bruising experience for Google, right? So they, they, they haven't had a huge, I mean, they haven't had runaway hits with their previous streaming experiences um, or products. Google well, TV but they're, okay. Yeah, any of their products, none of them have sold in big numbers out of the shoot. The, in, in, the Nexus 7, they didn't have that many. Remember, they ran out. They, they didn't produce enough. No, that was Most the 7. Of their that Nexus was the phones. That was, that was the 4. That was the 4. I got to look. The Nexus 7 that. actually had fairly good... Uh, a fairly good supply chain. They were in stores, but they didn't run out of stores. But um, hang on. Let me let me can I an, let me ahead, answer ahead, Andrew's ahead. question because I think it was a really good good comment that that leads into some other news. Um, at least you guys will eventually get the Chromecast. The rest of the world, the chances are actually looking good that the rest of the world may get it. I mean, we just heard news this week that you know s countries including Germany and Austria are getting um, Google Play Music all access. And that was only two months after the U.S. got it. That's like zippy compared to some of the products in the past. So you know, don't don't lose hope. Now you know, you Canadians, I uh, you know, I apologize. You may never get it, um, <laughs> or the U.K. or Germany. Actually, I'm I'm learning though that Chromecast with your i i devices are kind of glitchy. That's well, it's pretty much glitchy with anything. A, it's it's kind of been well, over. Gl glitchy, glitchy in what sense, Sheila? As in, well, um, I have to find the post, but um, like let when me you find. Stream, you know, it, it continually like you stream, I I have to, um, Dave Barney. Let me find his post, okay? No, the, I, I, I can ask that. I, it's glitchy Google. for me on my eye devices because I like got an iPad, and I mean, if I turn on a like for example a Netflix video. I start the video, I go do something else, come back into it. Now it's glitchy. It didn't want to control it. Then it's often on a hit and miss. Uh, let me yeah, say one quick thing, folks, for uh, tuning in now. That um, Natalie uh, Villalobos from the, the Google Plus Community Manager is going to join us in about a half an hour. Uh, their meeting's running a little long, so you haven't missed anything. She's coming on in about uh, 30 minutes. I'm sorry to interrupt. Go ahead, guys. You know, the thing, two things Google does not do well, as Alan has told us many times, is one is they don't do a good job building things, and they, ter they do a terrible job of marketing. They really depend upon their user base as their marketing department. And communications. That's free. Yeah. Okay, That's three free. things. Well, communications is kind of marketing. They don't yeah. do that well at all. You're right. They, they really have a volunteer marketing department. That's all of us people. Free. Free. And, and this and is that actually dovetails. That dovetails really nicely with, with Natalie joining us later. I mean, that, yes. That's almost a, a perfect question for her, so I'd almost yes. say hold on that one. Well, you know, it, it, also, it, it also goes to this type of a product. This, is, this is, is a great product for people that like to tinker, for early adopters. Um, I think that a lot of the John Q. Publics out there that are going to buy this unit, and I predicted this from the very beginning, are going to be disappointed and are going to have some issues with it, and it's I, going to end up in a lot of drawers. Why? I disagree with you, Craig, and the reason why I disagree with you is because this is a lot less glitchy than a ton of other consumer-level products that I've seen. This is very solidly aimed at consumers. It's very well, maybe authentic. you've had good luck with it, but I've heard seen a lot of other people that have had marginal success. I've got to tell you, though, I've seen people have marginal luck with Roku's. I've seen people have marginal luck Oh, yeah, the Roku's with definitely with glitchy. With I'll all of these with other, you know, with all of these other products, and as the products go, this is leading. And this is still much better than a lot. I've had people have problems with Apple TV, so you know, let let. Yeah, but let, really, let none of these are mainstream, Alan. I, I, I found I found the article. You know, it says when it comes to apps, there's even peskier is issue. This is on uh, readwrite.com. 
talks about Chromecast shortcomings. This when it comes to apps, there's even a peskier issue. The actual streaming, only four mobile apps directly support Chromecast at this moment, and two of them, Google Play Music and Google Play Music and TV. They are not available for iOS users. So. Correct. Well, we could we could discuss that. Do music, Another, but if, if you want to discuss that, we can discuss the the lack of availability of those apps on Apple. But that's a totally different story. Yeah. Um, the issue is yes, it requires app support, and yeah. with app support, it tends to work fairly well. And when you need to resort to the the workarounds, it does not work as well. And yeah. Google said that straight from the beginning. They yeah. said that if you you know have to go resort to tab casting, it's not going to work as well. Now, admittedly, mm -hmm. have I run into problems? Yes, I have. But yeah. for me, you know, I can the, the problems that I've run into, I blame more on Netflix than I do on the Chromecast itself. Implementation. It's still early days for all of this. All of this cut cord cutting, and I don't understand why they ever called it cord cutting, because really it's the opposite. Really, we need a cord for cutting the all cable of cord. These not the internet cord, it's, the cable cord. I would call it firing the the cable TV. You're net. not firing them. You still Comcast still a freaking yeah. Craig, Craig, please, please let me know what Craig, anything, please let me know when your birthday bundle. is, and I will send you a spindle of Cat Five cable. Guys, like Jason, <laughs> the TV yeah. stations like Jason Salas are destroying the world. <laughs> it's, it's, it's in June. We it's, have Cat Five. It's cutting the <laughs> cable bundle. It, wait, Alan, I have a technical question on on the Chromecast. Um, <laughs> We know that we know that we're able to mirror um, content either at full screen from within the browser or uh, from a browser tab. As a developer, have you? You're not mirroring. You're not mirroring. No, there, you are mirroring. You are mirroring when it's when it's from Chrome. You're, when you you're stream video, tab, you mirror you're browser content. When you're doing tab casting, you are mirroring. That I is, let's that be honest, the sending, worst possible scenario. I thought that you were sending the item to the. That's, Chromecast, that's and then you could the go video. on and do something else on your computer. Yeah, as only that's with the apps video. on mobile, and apps on mobile. That's what you're doing. No, no, well, to, on desktop. To, to, well, even on desktop, you can do it. Yeah. Uh, to answer Craig's question, though, yes, you are. You're not mirroring the desktop. You're mirroring a a single tab in Google Chrome. Exactly. Desktop exactly. too. They've done desktop. It's well, better. aren't you Early mirroring better. the thing in that's desktop. in the tab? I no, mean, you're I'm mirroring the entire contents of the tab, not just the video in the tab. You really? also can do mirror desktop too. It's early, early beta, but you can do it. Yeah, but you know, but to, to answer Craig's question without confusing the issue, you're you're mir when you're doing tab casting, you are mirroring the contents of the tab. Now, for some apps that run on the browser, for example, Nets, uh, sorry. Um, now, YouTube, thank you. For, for example, YouTube, there will be a Chromecast button in YouTube on the browser, and if you press that button, it then does the standard Chromecast stuff. You're not copying the tab over. You're just yeah. slinging it over. And that's ultimately what most people will be doing if they want you to be right. Chromecasting that their content. They'll be adding those left and right to their websites. Yeah. Right. They will be adding that button to the, the streaming media. So you you know, we see it now on Netflix in some cases. Not in every case, but in some cases. We see it on YouTube. Hopefully we'll start seeing it on more and more of uh, of these these video casters. I believe Voodoo has said that they're already working on it. Hopefully now can they, they add it will. to photos? Can they can they for example add some kind of a code that whenever a photo comes up on their website, it has a little Chromecast thing in the upper right-hand corner or something? Is that in doable? In theory, yes. Okay. In theory, you can Chromecast anything, not just videos. Mm -hmm. You can Chromecast anything, and I will say that again, anything. And Craig, what, what, what some people might tell you is they're like, okay, well, you want to use your TV as like a big, you know, source of eye candy if you have a house party and you want to take like your photo gallery and, you know, apply some transitional effect and basically like loop through all of your 800 photos, which is, which is totally cool, right? They would probably say, okay, well, write some sort of web application which automatically, you know, cycle through all your photos and then just mirror your, your Chrome tab and then, you know, boom, 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 easy solution. You can do that now. Just make a Google Plus yeah, album it works well. and tap. Cast yeah. the tab and then press and play. And play it. Yeah. Right. The real, the real good part, though, is going to come when somebody writes 
the web app that will start streaming your video, your, your pictures from a Google Plus album yep. directly to your Chromecast mm -hmm. and cut your browser out of the situation. Yep. Tabcasting is, it, it, it's there only because the world doesn't support Chromecasting. If the world supports Chromecasting, tabcasting can easily go away. And, and the issue I'm having right now with Chromecast where Google's, I don't, I mean, they're doing something a little odd. All the people that are developing for it, they want to have first hand working with them and they don't want it too much out for the public to mess with. I haven't seen that case and I know you have to contact them to even start doing anything. And, yeah. and, for those, and for those of you watching who may be developers or tinker around with like software development, the, the development model for Chromecast is stupidly simple. Yeah. It's, it's crazy how, I mean, basically what you're running on the Chromecast is a web page and then you communicate back and forth with it. Exactly. I mean, it's, it's almost brilliant in its simplicity. I exactly. find the documentation stinks, but the, the <laughs> concept is, is really seems pretty easy. Okay, okay, so so, 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 that, so wait, so that yeah. wait, uh, hang on, Craig. I want to get back to my my original question for Alan, right? Because now that we know that you can mirror um, a Chrome tab to your Chromecast and view it on like a big HD TV, have you as a developer ever actually tried to do that with uh, Chrome's developer tools? And that, actually okay. tried to get tried to you're get right. like your debugging screen at full at you know on a big display. You're asking. Oh, I see what you're saying. You're you can do that if you do the desktop. If you do the desktop. If you cast the whole desktop, and then you just put the developer tools up there, you'll be able to see it. Because what, what I'm wondering is what, what interesting application, and no, I haven't. Yeah, what I'm wondering in particular is because you know, like, if you have the developer tools, um, you know, embedded within the browser, if it's snapped into the browser, does it see that like extra frame? Will it mirror that as well? Or even if you pop it out, that's not necessarily a tab. I mean, that's kind of like its Still, own pop-out window. Is that possible? I I don't know. Again, I don't have the thing, and but I will soon, hopefully, on the twentieth. That's a good question. I haven't tried it, and to be honest, I haven't done much. I haven't done much tab casting at all. Alan, one more question: um, If you have a website that has a whole bunch of pages, okay, but it's all one website, hypothetically speaking, can yeah. you can you put some kind of a code somewhere that all of a sudden there's like a Chromecast button on every page in the website? That depends on your website, of course. But in general, I would say yes. It, it, the question is going to be, well, what does that mean to, to run, to, to Chromecast a web page? Those are going to be the questions well, that you need to answer. Well, if they clicked on the box, it would send that page right to their, their TV. Right? Well, but that's, that's something you get right now with tab casting. And while that's vaguely interesting, that's, that's not really what, Chrome, what's but not really what tab casting is good would, for. Didn't you say it would work better if you don't do it as a tab cast? Correct, but the question turns into what are you actually going to be casting? So, for example, hypothetically speaking, you know, at um, at Frederick.com, mm -hmm. um, very, you know, just just to pick a random website that I've you know never heard of before, for yeah. example. Yeah. Um, you could have it so that your web page shows your web page, but the Chromecast button on it would be showing on the the TV uh, a slideshow of a bunch of pictures. And those would be independent of the page itself. So once people started that Chromecast, it could keep sending the pictures to their TV and they could keep browsing the website completely independently of what's being sent to the TV. Yeah, that would be good. But then if you do it like that, you, you would have to kind of, it would have to be custom depending on what page they were on because you'd want to send a different slideshow maybe for different I mean, pages. That's another right? good application. I mean, that's yes, yeah. but, but these are all applications that can run. And I don't know how well yeah. it would run, I'll be honest, because I haven't played with it yet. But these are all applications that could run. Or you could have a like a, a Chromecast little little tiny toolbar that gave them various options. You know, see a slideshow of this restaurant. Um, see, send this whole page to your in theory, yeah. Yeah, it could give various options. See, I, I think when you say things like, you know, show this page, I'm not sure how effective that would be because web pages are designed to be interactive while a, a, a stream, a broadcast, is not designed to be as interactive. So, and, and your well, I'm just thinking if you were at some venue or something and you're, you're, you're having a big event, you're doing a presentation or something, you might want to pop up the whole web page and then you might want to then pop up something different. 
Um, and for example, if they've got a YouTube video that's associated with their web page, you could have a, a button on there to play the video. Okay. Sure. And um, actually, you you raise a really interesting, not not related to the same thing, but a really interested way of doing um, presentations. For example, yep. is you could have the 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 slide that you're presenting be uh, Chromecast and synchronized with your your page notes on your display so that you could be looking at your your screen and you could be reading off your notes and synchronized with what you're reading displayed behind you uh, via Chromecast are your your presentation version of the slide yeah let's oh, all yeah. count backwards from 10 until and, and count and see how fast Chromecast is integrated with Google Drive okay maybe count back from 30 don't give me too many ideas. <laughs> <laughs> Presentations being, you know, being the obvious candidate. But, you know, Craig, to what you were saying is also I think that's what Google is hoping for this time around, you know, coming off what they learned with Google TV, where people aren't just going to be retrofitting web content in a browser and saying, okay, well, I can allow this to be um, mirrored and then, um, you know, send it to, uh, to over to the Chromecast and display on a really huge monitor. And, you know, if, if it works, you know, it'll be okay. It's just the fact that you're actually sending content. People... Web developers are now going to start actually structuring their content specifically for the Chromecast, but using it in a browser. And that's what they really want to do with Google TV, is have people actually design for what's called the 10-foot UI and really like emphasize that type of experience. So, so developers are really going to aim as this as their target, um, their target front end. Yeah, you could have basically a, a Chromecast presentation that they click on that button and it just goes to a, a multimedia presentation that's that's sent right up onto the TV that like you say is is formatted and designed specifically for that can you do can you do um, yes like a regular hangout using Chromecast like could can you project the hangout onto your TV instead of like a monitor yes, yes. They were doing that the other day. Are you kidding me? That would be cool. <laughs> That's how half of Dan's viewers are watching it right now. They're in their living room, sitting back, having a beer, some popcorn, and watching the show. And, see, and I, th I personally, I think that's great for on a presentation level because I mean, if you put this like in a in a hospital lobby or you know in a, a hotel lobby or like a, a, a waiting room or something like that it's really cool because again it's it's eye candy but what I would really like to see and what I have wanted to see for the last two years is the ability for us to actually use hangouts inherently on TV and actually use cameras that are made specifically for television sets so that we can use hangouts right off the TV like we do with our laptops and what we do with our mobile devices. That would when be fantastic. When you say use hangouts, you mean participate in a hangout. Exactly, yes. Really. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. We, we, can, we can create hangouts, we can join them and everything like that, and we join them just straight off of our TV sitting from our couches. And there, there's a, a I webcam. I posted about this a long time ago, and, and Skype has an app on my Vizio TV. Yeah. There, now, there's a camera, I did there's a, a mock-up with a Google Plus Hangout, you know, I made the mock-up with a Hangout on a television set because a lot of, you know, TVs, it won't be long before TVs come with, with uh, a webcam. Vizio already makes yeah, they do a, already. one you can buy, right? I mean, it's an accessory. Yeah, I don't some, know if some, built in. Some smart TVs, some smart TVs have uh, embedded cameras in them, and Logitech actually makes a, a camera uh, built specifically marketed for the Skype community. Um, it's like 200 bucks, so it's not cheap, but um, it's exactly for that experience, and it's brilliant. Yeah, yeah, but, but, but you know, the logic check is come up. A subsidiary yeah. that's building a, uh, a special TV with a built-in camera that goes over a proprietary video conference network. It's like a, it's actually an all-in-one PC, and it can be used on their proprietary encrypted network for video conferencing, or it can be used in any kind of hangout. And logic check is formed this company. Now that would be really cool because there's a lot of people that that travel for business and and stuff like that. If you can if you can use Chromecast to do any kind of remote teleconferencing or presentations or anything like that, that would be really cool. Yeah, Alan, you were saying? Yeah, I was saying we, we talk a lot about cameras, for you. cameras built into smart TVs. Um, there was news this week about, I, I believe it was Samsung, but I could be wrong on, on exactly the manufacturer, uh, and it was revealed that the cameras in the TVs could be turned on without the tally light being on so that people could be recorded via their smart TVs without knowing it. Gee, I wonder where we've heard that concern before. Yeah. 
Hmm. When? How long is it going to take for before people just totally give up on this concept of privacy? I, I have. I, I did five years ago. But. It's, it's the exact same argument people that, I mean, I know people that are so hardcore, devout, ardent fans of the Xbox 360, and they won't buy the Xbox One because they swear up and down that it's going to be watching them 24-7. They're, and, and they're like, you know, they may not even be doing anything uh, particularly wrong. They can just be sitting in their living room, <laughs> hat, eating a bowl of cereal and having breakfast, and against their knowledge, that thing could be um, watching them. You know, which yes. which is certainly not the case, but but you combine that with the fact that these new devices and devices like Google Glass and like the Xbox One, they they perpetually listen for hot words, and like with the Moto X, you know, they're they're constantly homing and waiting for you to say a trigger word uh, that will invoke some sort of action, and that really freaks a lot of people out. And n yeah, I, I have to think that they're going to give up on all that after a period of time because. The benefits are, are so significant, and eventually people are just going to realize that it's just like the car. I mean, I, I get in the car, and I, and I drive, I take a trip. Of course, it's dangerous, um, a lot more dangerous than these so-called privacy issues right, with these, these webcams. Much more likely I'm going to die in a, in a car accident than have somebody come you know, from a 1,000 miles away and kill me in my house because they saw me on a webcam. Um, so they're going to have to tape on mine, huh? Say again? They're going to have to put duct tape on my camera when yeah. I leave. But, so I'm just saying, I, I think they're going to give up on these concerns eventually when they just realize that they don't want to give up all the benefits that they get from this technology. So it goes hand in hand. I mean, you, you can't have the benefits without giving up the privacy. And, so you know, Eric, you a bunch of comments that I want to hit quickly uh, before we go away. And, and, you know, part of it is because we get the, uh, I agree with Alan. Uh, I've got an Android TV <laughs> stick. It's good, but not consumer friendly, and I think that's the, that's, that's the big part of the point of the Chromecast is it's very consumer friendly. It has bugs, there is no doubt about it, but it's meant to be a consumer friendly device, uh, and I think it, it hits those goals. In comparison uh, are, to some of these others, it is, but people are always going to have problems with a new device. There's nothing wrong with the Chromecast at this time. Anyone complaining just doesn't know how to use it. I got to disagree with you there a little bit, Kadeus, and and part of the reason I disagree with you is. It's not like there's all that much to use it wrong. Um, I think people may not be understanding what it is and some aspects of it. You know, they they think that it's a conventional, um, dev you know, a conventional device that has a, a conventional remote control, or at least has a remote control app, and it doesn't. And I think that can can throw some people still. Um, Brian points out that his Chromecast has been working very well cross-platform. Um, once again, I have to say this just because, you know, it's Kadea saying that I'm right. Um, one of the, the comments from Andrew points out that tab casting is essentially a, a WebRTC stream, which is horribly bandwidth intensive, especially for streaming photos. Um, and it, it does offer a significant amount of lag, so I'm really hopeful that we're going to see some, some really good quality uh, examples of how to do um, good streaming remotely for, for some of these various uh, various other things. I think a, a slideshow app would be one, a wonderful example. Let, let me pick your brain about something, Alan, to, just on that point. Okay, so now we know that you can, um, what Mike was saying, you can do regular tab, uh, Chrome tab casting, which is fantastic. You know, I hope we'll try that, uh, that thing with the um, developer tools. Mike was saying, uh, you know, of course we know uh, there's a beta version where you can share your desktop. And also what Google is working up in, in their Kirkland office in Washington State is they've also got the uh, remote desktop control extension. Where do the, again, going with the, the blurred lines uh, reference, where exactly does do we go from, okay, between casting, mirroring, and possibly doing something like VNC and, and full-on remote access? Well, I think that... And would you even want to do that with a Chromecast? I don't think you do. And I think the big reason why, the, the big chunk that's missing from that is the interaction because what essentially that's uh, you're, you're going to need a keyboard to do that interaction and once you have that keyboard to do the interaction you've probably got a display and once you have a keyboard and display why do you need another display now there are probably some cases where that would be useful but I think there are limited cases for the most part and I think the the fact that you've got this additional input that you need is going to be limiting. The Chromecast 
is going to be best, and not exclusively, let me make that clear, I think it's going to be best for something that really is mostly hands-off, or at the very least that its inputs are going to be coming from alternate sources. So I can easily see, for example, it being used as a, a second screen for a number of games where your controller is still controlling something on the, the primary screen, and the secondary screen has additional information, or possibly group information. So those are the, the tool, those are the places that I think it's best. Um, doing a remote session, I can see there's, there's probably some use for it, but since you, in general, will need another input device for that remote session, I don't see the advantage uh, being nearly as big. Could you possibly work on your TV, again, using, uh, like, and we're going really hardcore tech here, but using the one feature that really sets Chromecast apart, really leveraging HDMI, HDMI CEC, which lets you do um, TV-level operations, could you possibly use remoting in that and, you know, do work on your, like, shut off your TV remotely or, like, stuff like that, even when you're out of the house? To me, the only thing setting Chromecast apart is the $35 price point. <laughs> Good point. Set to the from what, Michael? You know, everybody keeps talking about the $35 price point. That's the I, I key. Just that is the key. I don't understand. I, I don't understand for the life right of now. me. You Craig, know, some, somebody's buying this theoretically to put in their living room, to hook up to their TV, and they do spend a lot of time there. Why do they care if they have to spend a few <clears throat> extra dollars for that device? I, I, I don't understand that. We're going to wrap this up, but, uh, Craig, um, we, we disagree on, on how good it is. In my opinion, folks are getting used to knowing that they have a Wi-Fi router and that they have a cell phone and, and that they get better reception in the bedroom or the den or whatever. And some people don't get that, but I think they will. As far as the price point, um, the Chromecast is an amazing device. You're going to love it when you get it. But um, you don't have it yet, but you'll get yours in October. But, of course, I, I have mine here and now, and I use it all the time. And Probably I prefer, December I might get it. Uh, maybe, uh, in, in, in time for the holidays. But uh, I love mine. I absolutely do. There are bugs. It's not perfect, but it's well worth $35. Uh, the only better deal is, of course, the Warren County Report newspaper, which is free, uh, or Frederick.com, which is free. But seriously, um, I think that's awesome. So uh, our guest has arrived. So um, Hi, guess, Natalie. <laughs> hello, Natalie. How are you? Yay. Hi. Hi. Nice to see you guys. Um, so this is the, fir the first, I think this is the first time, have we hung out before? I don't know. You know. Or do we just gossip about each other? Yeah, maybe hanging. that's it. I, think I mean, that's it's what's... been two, over two years, and it's, it's not like I'm unfamiliar with your show and who you are, and we've talked a bunch, but I don't know if I've actually ever been on your show. We've only had a long distance I feel distance like really late to the party. Yeah, we've had a long distance. <laughs> well, thank God, because you, you saved the show, because we were really grasping at straws there for a while. I know, we even had Craig. Are you telling each other's fortunes yet? Or asking each other's astrological signs or anything? We're about to do no. just that, yeah. Yeah. Don't give Dan any ideas for a new feature. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just opposite. All right, so let, let, me, uh, uh, let, let me do a, 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 just a little intro, and then I think Jason has some questions for you. And Jason, I've added some great, there were some fantastic questions. I'm sure Natalie will agree. She shared our event for this program. And some folks asked some really great questions on her her post, and so I've added those. Jason, uh, so Jason, um, uh, but or I guess before you grill Natalie, um, I'll say that uh, uh, Natalie, uh, it, it, I got to make sure I pronounce Valalobos. Is that correct? Oh, so close. So Valalobos. So no, this gets to be fun. Valalobos. So uh, <laughs> so tortilla. Is pronounced like tortilla because two L's are pronounced like a Y in Spanish. So it's Via Lobos. Via Lobos. Via Lo Lobos. Via Lobos. It's probably Via Lobos, right? Yeah, it's basically. Like people do say it with a B sound. Um, yeah, it's it, actually Portuguese yeah. in origin and it came to my family through Mexico. Um, but a lot of people will, will ask me if I'm related to the famous Brazilian composer, which I'm not. Um, but, uh, yeah, some people do say Bia Lobos. I also go by Natalia a lot, which you guys, nobody on Google Plus really knows. Um, oh, my family calls me Natalia. Ooh. And that will be the oh. only secret that we get out of Natalie tonight, I think. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, anyway, it's great to finally get to hang out with you. And uh, uh, we've chatted a million times online, but we've never actually hung out before. Um, so, okay, Natalie, you are a community manager for Google Plus, or I guess the, com the main com uh, community manager for Google Plus. So um, uh, 
my only question is, and then I'll throw it to Jason. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got this crazy gig. Yeah. Okay. So this, how long do I have? <laughs> We've got uh, thirty an hour, four and a half hours, hours left. left I all think because right, right, we're doing right. a, a live stream. <clears throat> so, I uh, joined the internet when I was twelve. No, my um, so actually, if we want to go back way back, both my parents were actually techies. So when I started to develop my own tech career, you know, I thought that I had done it all myself, and my parents were like, Psh, you just like got in line, is what you did. Um, so for me, I feel like, you know, I've had models of mainframe computers in my room since I was a little kid. And so for me, being in the tech industry is really no big surprise. But how I got there was more just stumbling into lucky opportunities. And most people will say that. Um, and I don't have imposter syndrome. Do you guys all know what imposter syndrome is? Mm -hmm. Like you don't feel like you belong there? Yeah. Well, um, yeah, it's kind of like you don't. Successful people feeling like they don't deserve where, where they're at. So it's not necessarily that. But uh, back in um, 2007, I started doing a gig at a small startup in the mission called Style Mob. And Style Mob was later acquired by the Glam Network. And what Style Mob was, was a, um, a DIY style fashion community where girls, and there were some guys, were taking pictures of their outfits on the web. And I had come in to do a two days of consulting. I had found the gig on Craigslist, of all things. Um, I didn't have a full-time job. I graduated from college in 2006, and so I was doing gigs here and there. Anyway, stumbled upon this. I've been a part of a lot of subcultures throughout my whole life, if you can imagine. And, um, and so I knew a lot about the DIY fashion scene in San Francisco. So they asked me to come in, and I eventually accepted a full-time job, and I was there for about, I don't know, like five or six months or something. And then um, I had met a lot of great people through a site called I'm in Like With You, which eventually turned into OMG Pop, which was later bought by Zynga. Um, so I actually met an incredible worth of my tech community on a gaming site, um, if you can believe that, too. So, Moment of uh, silence for OMG Pop. <laughs> yeah. Now, what was uh, your, what, your role there was what? So I was a community manager. And, uh, and you know, I met all these great people through OMG Pop and uh, or I'm in Like With You. And I actually ended up applying for a job called a community manager. At this point, I had no idea this was an industry term. It was just kind of something like, oh, you're managing a community. I was helping fashionable women you know, and teens all over the web feel accepted by their own personal style. So I applied for Yahoo. And my friend Kevin Chang, who uh, is now a part of, he's running his own company called Donna. I sent out invites to all of you guys a while back. Um, he used to be a PM over at Twitter. He was the guy who got me into Yahoo. So then I joined Yahoo as an associate community manager, focusing on what was to, supposed to be a Facebook killer, Yahoo Mash, which I don't think anyone remembers, <laughs> except for maybe if you were in Southeast Asia somewhere, because we were really hot in Southeast Asia. So, um, so I, I worked on that project, and I was on it for about seven months before I was in Yahoo's first round of layoffs. That's when they pretty much laid off I don't know, like half the company. That's a big exaggeration. But they started laying off people. And then I was actually hired back on to what was called Yahoo Brickhouse. And Yahoo Brickhouse used to be run by Bradley Horowitz, who all of you know, and uh, a, a friend of mine, Chad Dickerson, who is the CEO of Etsy. And so I was there doing a, um, a kind of being an evangelist for something called Yahoo Live, which was their live streaming service. So I had gone to, you know, as an example of my work, I would go to South by Southwest and I mounted a webcam into my ponytail and I would bootleg concerts from my ponytail and I would walk around with a MacBook on my on my back in clamshell mode and there would be people on the web asking me to go see different shows so um, so that was really fun so you began and, uh, your criminal past in with, with concerts <laughs> yes yes don't tell any of the cable networks who I am there's probably bootlegged videos of Hanson was the concert that was most demanded if you can believe. <laughs> that's, that's um, Jason's favorite band because they play yeah. their own instruments the teenage girls of the internet loved me um, I, I would love to write a piece about this from OMG pop to mbop <laughs> right oh Let's call it that. this is probably like gonna be on TechCrunch in about 10 minutes <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, go, go ahead and advance your story. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No worries. No worries. Um, definitely feel free to pop in and have questions and stuff. So um, I then joined uh, 
So I became friends with um, a guy named Eddie Codell. He actually owns Eddie.com, and we ended up living in one of the first co-working spaces in the country, if not the world, called the Hat Factory in San Francisco. It was my big foyer into uh, where I'm going to live in a warehouse, and I'm going to be an artist in San Francisco. And so I did that, and Eddie actually introduced me to Daniel Burka. And Daniel Burka uh, used to be the head designer over at Dig with Kevin Rose, and uh, later worked at Milk with Kevin, and then we acquired Milk. Um, so Daniel is actually over at uh, Google Ventures. So Daniel brought me into Dig. I interviewed with Kevin Rose, and I joined Dig as their community manager. <laughs> And so you can kind of see how these like kind of hand over hand relationships and, and opportunities to meet people are really how I got funneled into taking care of large multi million person networks. Now you joined so, Google when? Uh, I joined Google. Um, so all of that wraps up. You know, I can go a lot quicker. But I started to consult with Google in November of 2009. I was hired as a contractor to work as a community manager for Google SideWiki which I'm not sure any of you guys remember. But you could go and annotate any web page um, using the SideWick extension. And then in August 2010, I went full-time. I was converted to a full-timer. And so I've been working full-time at Google for three years this week. OK, now um, i got two quick questions. Um, and yeah. then Jason's taking over. Congratulations. Um, one thing is, is um, the, the shorter question is this. Uh, when um, when Google Plus started, because you, your original equipment, right? You were from the beginning. Um, yes, I've been working on Google Plus for a very long time. So when it first started, the media billed it as the Facebook killer. Yeah. Right? And when we had when we first interviewed Vic, he described it as a social layer to buy, and I think that that's the way it was introduced. Mm -hmm. When you guys were planning this thing, did you think, you know, this is? A Facebook type product that's going to kick Zuckerberg's butt, or did you think like we have all these disparate properties and multiple things, multiple logins? Everyone's got 17 different accounts for all these different things, and we want to have a, a, a social presence, or did you know, or we've missed the boat on social? We need to jump on. D describe what your perception of the product was, and how it may have. Was it different or the same as the the, the Facebook killer news social network? that the media portrayed it. What, what were the differences and similarities there? Yeah, so I'll, um, so some of that, you know, I think, I, so I don't read TechCrunch um, all too often. Um, I don't really like hype media so much. Uh, if you guys saw last week when I said like CNN says that there's some terror alert, you know, I, I don't really like things that are supposed to fear you or pit people against each other. So. Um, didn't really pay attention to a lot of the negative because that will, when you're starting a new project and people are trying to pin you against other things um, or kind of make it a negative scenario, you just don't really want to pay attention to it. You just want to do full steam ahead and you want to make the most amazing rock and social product ever. And so when we were working on Google Plus, you know, when we launched uh, June 28th of 2011, you know, we had our own vision of what we wanted to be. And for me, um, you know, I just wanted to see Google have an established presence in the social space. And I wanted to do it in a way that with, you know, the many years of experience that I had with many of the exciting, you know, plans and ideas that we had as a team, I just wanted to see us execute on all of our, the dreamiest things, right? So when people even talk about, um, you know, what is the best way for me to describe this? You know, we were basically, all, all of the Google Plus team feels like family to me, and I think that there's a little bit of us in every part of Google Plus. You know, someone said, oh, how about we do this really crazy, insane idea, and then someone said, yeah, let's do it. You know, so if you can imagine Google Plus is, you know, an amalgamation of all the things we always dreamed of, and we got to create that. And what we felt lucky about, I think, is that people received it because it was something that they had dreamed up too. Somewhere, someone on the web, somewhere on the world, like, yeah, this makes a lot of sense, this Google Plus thing. And all of this, uh, you know, still feels very magical to me. Um, you know, on day one when we launched, I was like, man, I really hope people show up. Really hope people come. <laughs> and, and I think for me, um, I still get surprised by that. Um, you know, every morning I wake up and there's, you know, new Plus mentions, new ideas, new stories, new ways that people are, are using Google Plus. So, so I don't really like thinking that 
you know, we're trying to beat Facebook. You know, I think Facebook comes up with some great things. We also come up with great things. And, uh, you know, I giggle. Like, very honestly, I giggle when, um, when we get copied, not just, you know, feature for feature or design by design. But it's also very flattering when people copy each other and take different ideas. And when we think of competition, bring it on. You know, when, when we have more competition in the market, the people that benefit are the people that are utilizing those services. So, you know, how many different Dropbox, you know, type versions are there in the world? How many social networks? You know, there's a place for everyone. And I feel like Google Plus is the best, uh, you know, social product uh, on the web. Awesome. Now well, and I'm glad hands, that you're not... Uh, hands down. <laughs> yeah. like, I'm, I'm, yeah. glad, I'm glad that you and Facebook are not in some... some uh, uh, Smackdown a la Samsung Apple or something. Um, yeah. Okay, it, it, so go ahead. Also and not, then, it's, not really, it's not really in my character to be really um, brawl. I don't, brawly, I just was about to come up with the word. Uh, I'm not a very violent person. Um, you know, things get really exciting when, uh, like I said, when, it, when it's more you get copied. You know, because you're like, oh, man, that means we did it right because, like, someone else took it. Sweet, you know, <laughs> score one for the team. And, and that still feels okay. Um, you know, like we have great growth and we have a great community and we keep shipping. And, you know, and we're never going to stop. And Natalie, when they do that, when they so called copy you, that just makes your team work harder to make your product even better. Yeah, it's, it's like competition is not bad. I mean, I think that it's, mm -mm. you know, even with like phone development or app development or all sorts of things, you know, you're going to have a style or a version that works for you better than the other one, and, and that's okay. You find what you need on the web. Okay, so yeah. we have a bunch of um, questions? questions that we've come up with. Ooh. Jason specifically, we have, we have yeah, questions. Yeah, I have, I have Jason's list. I was like, oh man, <laughs> you share with me the craziness that you're about, because he was like, we're going to stick it to you, and I'm like, ah. So I, wrote, we also I, wrote have old, I wrote the Old Testament, and, but, but actually I want yeah, go ahead, uh, Jason. Uh, Natalie yeah, that perfectly segued what you said. And the one thing that I really wanted to start out with is the word you used, uh, you know, describing yourself with character. And like since the very beginning, I mean, I was fortunate enough with several people in this hangout right now to be on Google Plus on day two. And I know a lot of people were saying it's like, oh, you know, that that Natalie girl, you know, she seems really, really nice, and you know, she puts some, um, you know, she writes, she's really funny and everything, and that Vic guy's like really cool, like, and he's like some VP or something. And I told them I was like, you know, I've been in hangouts with these people. That's exactly how they are. Like, Vic is one of the funniest people you are ever gonna meet in your life. The guy is hilarious. I mean, you know, he's a corporate guy, but he's also really funny. I was like, Natalie, she's really sweet. She's incredibly spiritual and stuff like that. So, so two point question here. So one, talk about the need now that Google is a social. Um, entity for yeah. all of you there to actually be genuine, maybe for lack of a better term, and just you know be yourself and, and project you know your own personality. Um, and then also the one thing I wanted to touch on is the one thing I've admired about you so much is throughout this whole going on two and a half year uh, journey, if you will, an odyssey of Google Plus is you're one of the few Googlers who's actually stayed in the exact same role with the company that progressive for so long. You know you've even got people on the Google Plus team who have now moved on to Google X or you know moved on to you know Gmail or did their they come from AdSense you've actually stayed the course not that that's you know necessarily a bad thing um, and you know you've actually taken this project and you know seen it grow and been through there and you know the ups and the downs and everything so maybe talk about like what you've learned from that dynamic and actually being with it since the very beginning yeah <clears throat> so I might have you rephrase the first question but I'll definitely go to this to the second one okay you know so I've been uh, like I said, I've been on Google Plus for, for a very long time. I feel very honored, you know, I remember, you know, it being a, a, a very intimate family. Now we're a, a bit bigger of a family. Um, you know, growing up together and launching a product, it's kind of like launching, oh man, launching a child. That's not what I meant. I'm not telling you to catapult your children, but it's like birthing <laughs> a child, right? So it's this thing that we created together and then we pushed out into the world and that is really incredible. And I was actually, you know, when I was reviewing your, your questions, it's not the first, you know, social network that I've done that for. I, I think I'm on, like, number three or four. And, um, but this was the most inspiring and the most, most exciting, the most demanding. You know, um, people will, in this room or people watching might know that I'm dating Timothy Jordan, who used to be on the Google Plus team. He was our developer advocate. And when you're working 16, 18-hour days, 
you get to know people. And so we fell in love uh, before we launched Google Plus. And you know, even from day one, I was like, you know, Google Plus is a success because you know it already brought two people together, and we're good. You know, um, so and he's moved on to to Google X, and he's now the the developer advocate over on Class. And we've had a variety of community managers. Brian Rose went to Niantic. Um, you know, we've had uh, you know Toby Stein's no longer with the company. Catherine Graham is no longer with the company. We've had people just move on in their lives, and that's totally cool. When when we find out that people are moving on, I get excited because they're 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 pursuing themselves and they're you know they're moving forth in a way that they think is really good for themselves. And I don't necessarily I get sad and I, I have that mournful moment, but I'm really excited that they're they're challenging themselves and taking on something and they're being brave. I really encourage people to be brave in their careers and be brave with themselves. And so I think that it's something that I feel I honor. Um, and so, you know, there's actually, uh, you know, a couple community managers currently on Google Plus. There's um, there's Sky and Dory, and then myself. And so, in being the first hired community manager for Google Plus, I think for me, I've always, you know, in the beginning, I felt like a pillar of the community, and I was really feeling like my profile has been a place to showcase what other cool and interesting people are doing. And and I still feel that way, but I think, you know, I, I still like promoting and doing doing good work in that way. But I think as things evolved, what I really wanted was, you know, to use my community manager powers and find ways to nourish and build other pillars. Because it wasn't a community should never be hinged on one person. That just that doesn't work. That's not a community. So for me, I've tried to really listen to all the different users, all the different members of Google Plus. Because I really don't like the term users, that's why I'm going to try and change that. Um, you know, listen to their stories, listen to their ideas, go to meetups, and I say, you know, how can I make you more awesome? How can I use Google Plus to get you where you want to go? Because ultimately, I'm going to be a successful community manager if you get to tell your story in a better way, or if I connect you to this person, or if I give you this shared circle of, you know, 300 foodies. I think my DIY circle of crafters is 650. It's crazy, right? But when someone is new and you gift them the opportunity to supercharge them and make them more awesome, they get stoked. And then they go tell their friends. And that's, to me, the power of Google+, Plus, that word of mouth element, where someone's like, man, I really got to achieve, and I feel welcome here, and, and, and people know me, and I know myself better through Google+. Plus. And so my work as a community manager really you know, has been fulfilling for the past years because I've been able to nourish other people. And you know, that's hard to walk away from. Um, I think even if I did decide to move on in the company or, you know, one day go be an astronaut, um, I would still feel like I succeeded because I helped build up thousands, thousands of pillars of people that can carry on, and that's really cool. It's like kind of having a legacy, and um, and that's that's what I think is important. Sure. So I got one question, then Alan's got a really good one, like about sure. about the role. Um, so you got to take the bitter with the sweet, right? And I remember you like in, in the really early days when you would literally respond to any post that you were tagged in within minutes, <laughs> my own included. Um, talk to me about the purgatory that your notification stream must be. You know, be, being someone who's in charge of what you're in charge of and getting all these wonderful tags, but having every single person seemingly on the service um, tag you in the most you know obscure posts or giving you feedback or just saying, hey, Natalie, check this out, or you know. Whatever. What 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 kind of insanity is that? Um, so I used to answer a couple hundred a day, and it would start, especially in the beginning. Um, I would roll out of bed, and I'm still blurry eyed, you know. And I have my phone, and I would I would start checking. Oh, you guys can see my little my little hangout guy. Um, I I would just start checking my email, and I'm just like, is there anything that says the word abuse, or I'm sad, or I'm mad? And I'm looking for everything, right? And I'm barely awake. But, you know, I would make sure there was no crazy things going on. And then I would allow myself to take a shower. But if if something was going on or something around the world happened while I was sleeping, I would just, like, put my robe on and get on my laptop and, like, start going as fast as I could. And it's, it's slowed down since then. And I think, again, in helping to build up more pillars, more community-minded helpers, more people that are educational resources, um, I actually get less, so it might not be as crazy as you guys think, 
uh, you know, my notifications, you know, have always been at 99. Um, it's never anything different. When I go hang out with other team members on Google+, Plus, they're like, are you kidding? Like, that's normal? And I was like, oh, yeah. Oh, don't even worry about it. Um, my trick that I do is that um, I was mentioning in Gmail is I have a filter for everything Google Plus and every mention of Plus Natalie. And so all of those get routed to a Gmail filter. So I actually have every single Plus mention that anyone's ever done to me saved as an email um, in my Gmail. So I, I know how many over time I've responded to or at least how many have come in because sometimes you know, you're like 10 comments deep, you know. So, so kind of like the same way that Justin Bieber's got his own rack at Twitter about all the all the tweets that mention him. There's probably some like some server in Google's data center that says, "Here's Natalie's mentions." Or... Yeah, yeah, and <laughs> and, it, and I don't have any other special tools. You know, I have exactly what you guys have. Uh, my my Google Plus is not some experimental crazy version or anything. I have exactly what you have, and I've always loved that because when when people are feeling this pain of notifications or some pain about anything, I'm like, oh. I know exactly what you're talking about. So even for me, you know, on my plus mentions, you know, I'm hundreds of thousands deep by now. But you know, I can go back to saved conversations, and I can go and find things, and everything's categorized, and it's it's actually really useful. So oh, okay. my purgatory has has lessened, um, unless you know, there's some hot hot button issues, and I and people really try to stick it to me while I'm sleeping. Um, <laughs> and that's really hard. Or, you know, I get the occasional, you know, someone tagged me in a photo that definitely should not have been tagged in, right? <laughs> and so, you know, I have some really funky messages, you know, and, and shares. Like, I don't even, I won't even screen share them for you. They're pretty crazy. Mm. Um, you know, so I've received every style of communication on Google+. And it's well, and, and I realize that I've just now referenced Hanson and uh, Justin Bieber, so it's like I'm going to transition over to uh, it's Alan. It's great now, for SEO, cool. though. Thank you for that, Jason. <laughs> so, so Natalie, first of all, it's great to have you on the show. And it's you know we've we I've been talking to you probably since I was first on, and that's always been wonderful. But I think one of the things that always has confused me, and I know it's confused a lot of people because we've talked about it on this very show is um, kind of a, a two-part. You've, you've mentioned that a community manager is a standard term. It's a standard job description. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is a community manager, and what do you do? You feel, what does a community manager do in general, and what do you specifically do as part of this job? Because I think people don't really understand that. Yeah. No, it's a really great question. And I will say that as an industry term, um, there, it, within the tech industry, there is a community manager. Later, you know, as I went through my career from 07 to 09, I held many different types of community manager jobs at different companies, from startups to I worked as a, a community manager for the Department of Defense, you know, things like that. Um, each one is very different. Uh, for Google, in the beginning when Google Plus first started, you know, we called it kind of the wild, wild west. You know, we didn't really know how a community manager should fit into, you know, a gigantic social network. Um, something like this that was just kind of blossoming and, and blooming. And there were, you know, I'm, I'm go over here talking to uh, Dane Cook one day. And then over here I'm talking to, you know, Blink-182. And then I'm, like, ho helping a guy with this cooking show. And then I'm, like, over here, ask, you know, answering 500 support questions. And it was all over the place. Now that we've grown up a bit more, we have specialized teams that will focus on different areas. So the Google Plus marketing team will focus on celebrities and they will focus on cooking shows. Whereas my role over the past, I'd say, year has more so evolved into being less of a face and a voice and being, you know, um, meeting everyone and trying to, you know, you know, hurt all the cats to more of a support-based role. So some of the, the things that I've launched in that vein have been to create scalable support solutions. So like I said, people would try and plus mention me in the middle of the night, and then they get really pissed off when I wouldn't respond to them. And they would take it really personally, and they didn't understand why I slept. So we created the Google Plus help page. So now there's a team that you can plus mention at any time of the night, and granted, they have their own working hours. But you can plus mention them whenever you want, and you get a response. So you don't necessarily have to ping, you know, me, Vic, Bradley, Guy Kawasaki, 
you know, you can just ask a simple question. So I launched the Google Plus help page with my team. Uh, the Google Plus Discuss community is another version of how we're trying to develop community and support within the product. You used to be able to go, to, you used to only be able to do it in the Google forums. And so we created the community. And I actually have some secret helpers that help me out uh, within that community. And so I work with them behind the scenes to really foster and deliver the right kind of education and opportunities. Again, kind of going back to building out evangelists and pillars of community. Um, so for me, right now as a community manager and having seen my role evolve from being like a party host to a hang it on air host to, you know, a face and voice, and I, I'm still very much a face and a voice and an advocate for you guys to the product team and from the product team to the users, but it's just evolved into more of a how do we build these scalable support-based solutions so that everyone gets an answer and they have the best help on the web. So at least for now, that's where I'm at. When it comes to you know a community manager in the industry, generally you're perceived uh, as a conduit between the users and the product team, and you are their advocate, right? So whether that's you know things that people love or hate, you're you're that communicator. You're helping to maybe run some user experience studies. You're uh, working with research teams. You're sitting side by side with the engineers trying to think of solutions. So so. Uh, just to clarify one thing, you said you're their advocate. Which there, the the user's advocate or the uh, the engineering team's advocate? Yeah. So community manager is really seen as the people's advocate, like okay. the user's advocate. So so so, so, when I, so so when I respond to things and I say thanks, I'll tell the team that is my job. It's okay, interesting, so Alan, because not only is she an advocate for what she hears from people, but her mm -hmm. job is to use the product all day long, and so she, unlike ah. the engineers. Because we talk about this, you know, there's dog fooding and everything, but but uh, there, there's a so, sometimes you see folks designing a product and they really don't use the product. Um, it'd be like if you had an iPhone and you were designing the Android app and you would test it and dog food a little bit, but your your go-to phone is the iPhone. Your job, uh, you get a lot of. Not only are you forwarding what we say and what all the users say but you actually say you know this this feat, this is screwed up I don't like this aspect of it so I imagine that's valuable and your own experience I mean you're a user as well you're you're one of the users right. not not just uh, um, you know so and and you're a high for those of us who get a lot of notifications it's good that there are people in the same boat um, who uh, can you know help with some of that traffic control and and that's a and, that's a big problem because it it, yeah, it gets absolutely. crazy sometimes and, you know, and stuff for, slips through the cracks. Yeah, no, exactly. And and you know when when people within Google Plus are experiencing bugs, say like maybe there's a Hangout on Air issue, um, you know Dory will go ahead and she will file a bug directly to the engineering team, being like, "Here's what's happening. Here are all the details that I that I received from these five people that are all experiencing this, this same issue. Can we look into it?" And so we start driving resolutions based on what we're hearing. You know, and let's say I have 30 people that are like, man, I really don't like these plus one posts. And I'd be like, okay, I'm going to create a report about that with all of the different qualitative information, and I'm going to share it with Shimrit. And then Shimrit can say, okay, like, let me think about you know, how we're doing this. right? And so it's really this opportunity. We deliver information in a couple different ways. I will say that I probably spend two to three hours on Google Plus per day because I probably have sometimes anywhere between three to five hours of meetings. And that's not counting that I have an hour and a half commute time, you know, between home and work. So I'm in there and I'm picking stuff up. And I'm also at the beginning, middle and end of my day responding to all the plus mentions. So saying that I'm in here all the time, most people are like, why is she not responding to me really fast? It's like because I'm also doing all the behind the scenes work to build the best solutions, to work with the right teams, to meet with Brian Glick about how we're going to make communities more awesome, you know, helping you know uh, people figure out how they're going to do, uh, you know, a hang it on air show for the next sixty days, you know, things like that. Oh, can Jason. I put a, can I put a plug in for Google sure. Plus help? Yes. Um, I will say to all the viewers that are out there. If you ha if you don't have Google Plus Help circled, circle them. Mm. And if you have a question, if you have a problem, go ahead and tag them. I did. 
especially when absolutely. I had my, and a lot of when um, I had yeah. my page prob when I had my page problem, they went to bat for me and got it fixed. I don't know how they did it, but magic. Thank you. We have a, we have an incredible team behind the Google Plus Help page. I don't and think it's marketed well enough, Natalie. I, I I can't tell you. You'll you'll see me. I mean, frequent. I, I know you. You're one of the Google Plus Help uh, team, um, but uh, frequently someone will plus mention me and or Alan, um, and uh, they'll say, you know, how do I do this or you know, there's this bug, whatever, and I'll just put in a yeah. comment, Google Plus Help, because a lot of people don't even know it exists. I, um, mm -hmm. I would advise you or request that you guys market that better because it's a useful service. And like you said, um, if if they plus mention you and you see these posts, you know they. Brad, Vic, you, the, the whole, you know, Sergey, Larry, you know, um, yeah, <laughs> because um, their their computers messed up or whatever, and so uh, really, Google Plus Help is the way to go. You're still getting Natalie or and or Dory and or the others, um, mm -hmm. and it's 24/7, like you said, or close to that, and that's what I you should just, be doing. I would just like to say that the only the only criticism I have about Google Plus Help because I've used it a lot. Mm -hmm. is I'd like a plus one that you guys have read it even if you don't respond because I send specific posts to Google Plus Help and I hear nothing, not a ning ningoon, you know, and yes. I'd like to just... You just want to be, feel acknowledged. Yes, yes, yes that, it, that it went through. Yes. Somehow, you know? Are they, I, is it a case? I have started taking notes, so I will definitely, yeah. you know, I, I definitely right. think about marketing it better. Um, or, it, or, if the, or if the issue has been fixed, let them know. Yeah, so that one's a bit harder, I will admit, yeah. because um, finding every single person in our long... Well, queue, oh, that, that would be hard. Yeah. So, yeah. so, you know, but we always think about ways that we can close the loop, um, is what we call it. Um, so when you think of the send feedback, and people are like, I don't know what happened with my send feedback. You know, we could do a better job there of saying, hey, we got it, um, you know, and we could update you. Again, similar problem of like, how do we, how do we go back and find every single person that had that same issue? We do look at every send feedback report. Same with all the abuse reports. People are like, man, is anyone even checking this out? Um, we look at every single one. We have a, a whole different team that does that. Um, the Google Plus Help page, uh, it used to be mostly me, Dory, and Sky answering it, and we actually created a whole other team to, to respond so that it could free us up to do more stuff because we, had, we were juggling so many you know, awesome opportunities we built, but they became so successful that we had to pass them on to more teams. Natalie, so, can, I just, can I just jump in here and ask yeah. you to talk a little bit about the abuse process? No, I, I, I will do my best. That's a hot button issue for a well, lot of people, so I'm sure they, they'd like a, a, as good an idea of, of what goes on uh, as you can give. And we understand some of it's not going to be discussable, but people, you know, people have safety concerns. So I, mm -hmm. I think they'd love to hear more about also, what, what goes it, on. Also, what is and what isn't abuse slash violation of the terms of service. Some people think... That, I've seen this where uh, someone said is saying mean things about me and um, not to, I mean, I, I, you know, like I've blocked this person, but they're saying mean things to me in comments and other posts. That may not be a violation of the terms of service. That's First Amendment right. They're, you, you have a right to be a jerk. Um, they may not be violating the law or the terms of service. Wow. What, what is yeah, and what Dan, isn't. Dan, <laughs> Dan, before she moves on from the Google Plus Help page, though, I had one more quick question about that. There's a Hangout posted on there right now that I guess was posted yesterday mm -hmm. um, that it says seven people are hanging out right now. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. is that a Hangout that's been going on since yesterday? Definitely not. It's a known issue. Uh, Dory hosts Hangout out, uh, office hours every Thursday, and for some reason, the Hangout just doesn't want to end, but that does not mean that she is still in there. Um, so that is a known issue that we're working on. But that Hangout is still going on, so if somebody clicked Join Hangout, they could go in and join it. Yeah, it's that. Yeah, we're we're working on that. Oh, it, would, okay. it would say nobody's here right now, uh, but yeah, I, that's an issue. I, I'll well, just it says say seven that, people are hanging out. I just say I miss seeing who is hanging out stream. I think <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of people really miss that too. Um, I, I get that question rather frequently. Is you know I really miss being able to kind of like surf 
around to all the, the public hangouts, right? And so it's, it's really interesting how nostalgic we get about those things. And I think that there are a couple workarounds that you can use search to try and find them all. Um, you know, I think for me even, um, I like doing hangouts on air. Uh, I feel like Hangouts and I are, are a bit more challenging in the sense that you have to curate them. You know, I think Dan did a great job curating all of you and setting this up. And they they end up kind of bringing out a different style of voice. Um, curating, is that another word for herding cats? <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, you know, I, th I think Hangouts on Air are really incredible. And I think more people, uh, you know, to Dan's credit, need to, um, you know, or could find more skills to take on a show. I think a lot of people want to be really great at Hangouts and Air, but they've never really presented before. They haven't really learned to communicate their voice accurately. And so I would love to see more Hangout on Air shows and more skills-based work to help train people to be great hosts. Um, see, uh, that's what I'm doing, Natalie. I, I, I'm awesome. going to be training, pe I'm training people how to use Hangouts. Myself. I think it's fantastic, mm -hmm. Sheila. Uh, you're, 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 she, she's doing her own shows. I think that's fantastic. Um, More women uh, HOA shows. I'm right there. Absolutely, Monday absolutely. Nights, Monday nights at 10 p.m. That's what we do. We help people get shows started. That's all we do. Hangout yeah, we'll, we'll have to get you sometime uh, on Craig's Hangout 10 show, which is specifically advising people on on Hangouts uh, on air. Awesome. A, a, a quick follow up: What do. you just said, and then then we'll go to the abuse question, um, Natalie. Um, are you guys working uh, to because I've heard a lot of people complaining on Google Plus about discovery of uh, I guess their video chats now or parties or I, mm -hmm. I forget what, what 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 is your I don't know what your name of the week is um, for this but th those those great what we used to call the non HOA hangouts and that's how all oh, yeah. all of us met a lot of us met you know and it I would like to just be able to say like I wonder if anyone's hanging out. And I could join if I'm bored and, you know, I want to be entertained and make new friends, that sort of thing. I used to be mm -hmm. able to host a public hangout and um, it would immediately fill up and uh, I'd meet all kinds of interesting people. I mean, one time I had some guy, it was during the Libyan crisis and I had a guy in Libya and I had a guy in Saudi Arabia and they were arguing. And it was really interesting to listen. I mean, they were very polite and, you know, but arguing, um, debating, I guess. And, and now that's harder. Are, are you guys working to improve discovery? of uh, the, the video call hangouts so that people can meet new people and, and hang out with their friends. Yeah, unfortunately I can't speak to that of what we may or may not launch. Uh, I know that Dory hears it a lot and I think especially from those of us that were here before the, the last redesign, um, you know, it was a different style of how we were approaching making connections on Google Plus and I hear a lot that Google Plus is for meeting uh, people that share the same interests, people that you didn't necessarily know before. I hear that a lot and that's a really powerful story for a lot of people on Google Plus. So I think that that feature supports that culture and how we were connecting. And so, you know, I will definitely reiterate it to Dory that that is a big piece of feedback because I hear that one too and I've, and I've said it so it's always good to, you know, keep plus no. one. Right. Hang, hangouts are great, but it's just when you have to search for who's online, mm -hmm. that's not cool. Yeah, they got to work on that, especially because <laughs> you're, you're Google. Like, I and, need this to be as easy as possible. Yeah, Google, right. if nothing else, Google does search well. So, <laughs> but yeah, uh -huh. I've always said, I've always described them, at, at, you know, yeah, uh, Twitter's where I get my news, Facebook is where my mom tells me what time to show up for Thanksgiving dinner, and Google Plus is where I meet new and interesting cool people uh, and and if that isn't working then that's a problem but anyway let's go to Alan's uh, uh, earlier question about uh, abuse and uh, whatever you want to say on that and I'm really curious and Alan can quite because I've, I've kind of forgotten this question you may have as well but um, uh, I am curious what exactly is abuse you know because I hear people saying I've seen posts someone is saying mean to paraphrase, someone is saying mean things about me on the internet, on Google Plus, and I want them, yeah. I want the post yeah. deleted or so, something. And that's probably mm -hmm. not a violation of the terms of service any more than if if I call you up on on your cell phone, and I say Alan's a real jerk. You know what I mean? It's not Sprint or the telco's responsibility to shut my phone down. Mm -hmm. um, so go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So. 
So, um, so I will say that it's hard for me to give it might be hard for me to give details about what isn't is not abuse and, and I'll tell you why and I'll tell you why I won't do it it's because when you start to define all the things that one can't do it means that people will do all of those things up to the point until they will get kicked off right they will they will push the boundaries they will push the limits and do it all the way and you know right until like you know, they basically know the boundaries and breaking points. And so for us, you know, I will say that we don't outline every single type of abuse or harassment or we say, you know, in our terms of service, you know, when you review it, you know, we have guidelines on bullying. We have guidelines on, and I say terms of service and guidelines, they're different documents, but the, the guidelines for harassment, guidelines for bullying, um, all those types of things, they're usually one to two sentences and they're a little bit vague. Um, and it's because we don't want to tell bullies how to be the best bullies before they get punished. And so our team on the Google Plus side, we have you know, an understanding of, of what constitutes um, harassment and bullying and abuse. And we get the chance to, when anyone feels uncomfortable, they can report abuse, they can report nudity or you know all the different Forms. And then we can go and look through our checks and balances and our books and say, actually, yes, this is, you know, truly harassment in the terms of how it's legally defined by, you know, the state, by the nation, by federal government, you know, by internet laws, like all these things that you don't necessarily all need to always explain um, in a, a, a terms of service document or guidelines because you want those to be easily readable and easily um, understood in the sense of right and wrong. Do you have different and guidelines so, uh, in different countries? For example, if someone in Saudi Arabia reported abuse versus someone in Canada or the United States uh, I don't or think Iran, so. are, are there different I standards? I don't think so. Because I can double check, but I don't different. think so. Right, because, and I think what's, what when you're talking about people being jerks, that's interesting, right? Because the internet doesn't have a codified form of etiquette. You know, when you're on Facebook, when you're on Twitter, you, when you're on wherever, you don't, you shouldn't be a jerk, you shouldn't be a troll, but people are jerks and trolls. People do harass each other, people say nasty things or bad words, and, you know, if they continually do that, right, and they continually do that and you say, hey, I have boundaries, I'm asking you to stop, please stop, and they keep doing these things, then, you know, then that starts to be an that's less of them being a jerk and them continuing past when you said this is no longer okay with me, right? And, and perhaps something like that is abuse. Um, so for me, when people say this person is bullying me, when it's someone who just disagreed with them in a, in a political post, I'm like, well, they, you guys are just disagreeing and you want me to take this guy out because he's just kind of disagreeing with you. That doesn't really work. Um, you know, it needs to be something that is actually against our terms of service or against our guidelines. I don't you know, escalate accounts based on people that are just mean, uh, necessarily. Um, you know, and I, I feel like what a lot of people will say is like, this person has been really mean to me, and I will say, okay, well, have you reported abuse at the comment level, the post level, the profile level? Can you send me screenshots? Can you send me posts? And they're like, well, I don't have any of that. And I'm like, well, like with any good case, you need evidence, right? And so that's why we ask people have you reported abuse because that gets to go to our team and we look at that and we look at every single piece so I think that's important when we're trying to help each other out is using the tools that we've built because it's the scalable way that I'm we're I'm sorry able just to interrupt you real quickly Gary please you gotta stop that don't take those and don't <laughs> open apps during the show because it makes a noise and it's making something appear on the thing go ahead now, <laughs> I'm sorry yeah no so so the tools that we've built are the scalable ways that we're able to address and react and continue to develop good community help. Now, you know, when I get escalated things about people who are thinking about committing suicide, you know, I, or, or child pornography, or every horrible thing you can think of on the internet, I've heard it or seen it. Um, you know, there are, those are certain cases where I will still ask for, you know, links or you know people will send me profiles or whatever 
and I will escalate that immediate, immediately. You know, it's still good to have that kind of you know paper trail, if you will. Um, and if people are saying, "Oh, someone is," I think someone's going to come to my house. You need to call the cops. You need to call your local law enforcement because it's not necessarily like I can't come help you, right? And it's not necessarily Google that's going to come help you. We will do as much as we can as Google, but if you feel physically unsafe, you need to call the cops. And so, you know, it's not just the internet's responsibility or Google or Natalie, you know, you need to take that matter into your own hands if you feel like you are in danger. Yeah, it's like if, if, you're, if your kid uh, takes a, a bottle of Tylenol, you don't call that company and complain, you know, you call 911. <laughs> Um, yeah, and we have a, an incredible parent safety center on Google Plus that our team built, which is how parents can help keep their kids safe online. We have that. Um, if, you know, if people are like, well, you know, they're, they're harassing somebody else or you see bullying online and you're like, well, it doesn't say anywhere that I can't do this. And you're like, actually, here's the terms of service and here are the guidelines. And yeah, the internet doesn't have etiquette, but don't be a jerk, right? And, and I think that when it comes to you know talking to people about what they should and should not do on Google Plus it gets really hard because it's all subjective and so I think you know I always let I always tell people always feel free to block someone always feel free to report abuse you know if you don't feel comfortable like use the tools that we have a lot of people don't feel comfortable using the block feature because they think that the other person will find out or that the other person gets notified and it's really about creating the safe space that you need in order to experience the web, Google Plus, as you want. You can I've find out. You, you can so find I've out. Lots I've been of people. Um, you know, I have a block list, so I don't. I don't try to be friends with everyone. There are some people that are just not friendly people. I recommend so, you so block Natalie, Craig me... Ship as soon as possible because he's he's kind of a rabble rouser and he he uses a lot of Apple products. Uh, uh, ah. but, so so I want to go to Alan for follow up, and then we'll go back to Jason and sure. and, and folks. Um, uh, please, uh, you can still submit questions. Uh, please comment on YouTube or on Google Plus. We're seeing all of them, and um, you can still ask questions for for uh, for Natalie via Lobos, right? Yes, I have a lot of tea, so I'll be here a while. Unless she's in the ladies' room because she's drinking all this tea. Um, <laughs> so anyway, I'm not taking the hangout on air there. So basically, abuse is like that famous Supreme Court definition of kitty porn. They said the difference between straight up kitty porn. And a, a, a funny picture of your kid in a bubble bath, you can't really define it, but you know it when you see it. Um, so I guess it's like experience if they, if and guidelines. I, and I would say, I would say even, even, even be proactive about it, right? If you see something and you're like, man, this does not seem right, report abuse. Like let our team make the judgment call and, and like let us know. Let Google Plus help know. Report abuse. Block the person. You know, and, and, that, and we'll handle it. Right, and it's and it's don't try and sort it out yourself. Like, is this wrong or is this right? Let us figure it out. Like, totally, we're here to like de-stress your experience with these tools. So don't get stressed out. Like, or get Craig that's what Ship. We're here for. Craig Ship has like yeah. 50 weapons within Dan. three feet of him. So you could just uh, contract Dan. Craig to go over since, there and just beat the living Dan, you know. Since Natalie, gotta go, guys. Since I Natalie, you, thank you, Sheila. Good to see you. I'm training someone. All right, good you for go, you. Girl. Yeah, Natalie, right. Natalie won't tell the trolls how far they can go without getting blocked. I'll tell them. Just watch the previous Google Plus shows, watch all of them, and see how far I push it each week. <laughs> That's how far you can go. No further than that. Yeah, and I'm, I've, you know, I've been just like users on Google Plus. You know, I have been subject to people stalking me, to abusing me online to bullying me, to harassing me, to groups of trolls getting together to try and find ways to harass me. So I am not, you know, um, I, I'm, I'm in it as well, like it, it affects me. And so, you know, when I start to see that behavior as well, not just waiting for it to happen to people, you know, I have worked with our team to define those guidelines, build the tools, and figure things out in a way so that if it happens again, we have something there in place. It gets better, right? Okay, so, so Natalie, for, before I ask this question, I just want to bring in Joshua's suggestion for, for uh, a guideline here. The guideline should be, be excellent to each other. Yes, make each other more awesome and be excellent to each other. 
So you've mentioned a couple of times now the team, and you've mentioned some of the tools that are, are built into Google Plus to uh, block people on report abuse. Can you kind of discuss the entire, you know, soup to nuts? Hmm. Um, how does somebody, wh what should somebody be doing? What's, what action is taken on the back end? How does somebody know that that action is being taken? What's the, the whole kind of process and the team and, I don't know, the, what, what's the, both the big and the little picture when it comes to abuse? Um, so, you know, I will, I don't know if I can describe all of our magic sauce, but I will say that when someone reports abuse, um, you know, it is, you know, put into a pool, so to speak, and we have analysts that look at it and make those determinations. And those analysts are, they absolutely know, you know, from, from their expertise, you know, what is great or what is not so great. And, um, and then they make that judgment call, and then they would execute based on that judgment call. So let's say if it happened to be some guy that was spamming the entire internet, uh, entire Google Plus about his bathing suit company, and he's doing it on profiles and comments and communities, we will clearly see that as him spamming, and we will make a judgment call on what to do against spamming. And so that's kind of as much as I can go into, right? But it's, you know, we, that's, I, I don't want to explain too much more. There, there are lots of different steps off that can happen off of those. You can think of it as a kind of choose your own adventure, if you will. Um, but we have, you know, in, an incredible team in place that that's their focus every day is, is to kind of see all the yucky stuff. Now, how much of a, an appeals process is there if somebody gets, uh, either if somebody gets accused of something that they feel is unjust, or somebody has filed a complaint and they don't feel that um, appropriate action is being taken? Um, a lot of times when people feel like something has wrongfully happened, say one that happens is a common name policy, you know, violation, like, they're like, why did Google Plus like take down my name? And we don't need to go too much into this. <laughs> I'm just kind of bringing it up as an, as, a, as an example. Right? As my as my pet sore point. But okay, keep going. Okay. So you know, just as a very simple example, you know, someone's like, you know, my true name is Natalie Wolf Village, which is what my last name means. Um, you know, but Google Plus doesn't think that. Then, and I've appealed and blah blah blah. Well, then a lot of times they will reach out to the Google Plus help page or they reach out to me and they'll be like. I went through the appeals process. I promise that I'm me, right? This happened actually to uh, to Bobby Seale, um, S E A L E. He was the uh, one of the founding members of the Black Panther Party, and him and all the people that were in a Black Panther community reached out to me and said, "Hey, this is really Bobby Seale, and hey, this is, you know, I've given supportive evidence. I am Bobby Seale." And I said, "Okay, like as a history major, I definitely know who Bobby Seale is." So. Okay, let me look into this, right? And so then I would reach out to my team and I'd be like, "Can you can you check out, you know, what's happening here?" And so, you know, sometimes and it doesn't happen too often, it happens every now and then. You know, we will say, "Oh, you know what? Our mistake. Our bad." You know, uh, we don't know what happened. It happened so, to kim.com. Uh, uh, you what? It happened to kim.com. The the Yeah, like like it it, it happened. I remember cuz he tweeted it. I told Vic and then they fixed it, but the, I, I think they deleted his or whatever they did, but he tweeted a thing that said, you know, we don't think this is really your name, <laughs> and, he, and he tweeted, he's like, I, I'm Kim.com, you know, from his official Twitter Well, no, account. well, Dan, we, we've been talking about this since the very beginning, and we said, like, when the whole pseudonyms, you know, policy was debated, you know, to the nth degree, Alan and we said, like, if, if, Alan got no, wait, deleted. Wait, if, yeah, he brought that up when you were away, you know, oh, sorry. doing whatever you were doing. So, um, so, like, if you were sitting, in, and all of a sudden you got a Google Plus notification, and you said, hey, Curtis Jackson has just tagged you in a post, would you have any idea that that was 50 Cent? Or you said Stephanie Germanata was inviting you to a hangout. You would probably have no idea, unless you're really hardcore, that Lady Gaga wants to hang out with you. Yeah, and, and, and I don't know if Alan said this, but uh, the, the policy was the name you normally use in real life. And in and, and Alan's case, that, that was the name, you know, that was his nickname that he used. But um, Alan, are you really 50 Cent? No. <laughs> no, but I'm really prisoner. He's Alan is fifty cents. Uh, he's not Curtis Jackson's fifty cent. I'm worth, yeah. worth a little bit more than that. No, so <laughs> not to so not to derail it too much, but you know, so so there 
there are times when you know we do need to, we do need to fix something, and we actually discover a bug in the process, or you know things like that. And so, um, so there there can be an appeals process, and for say the common name policy, there is an appeals process. Um, now, if there is some type of funky abuse, and someone's like you guys haven't taken this profile down at all or in time because everyone has their own expectations of when something should be done. Um, you know, if, if they're like, look, I reported this a week ago, you know, what might have happened is we looked at it, we made a judgment call, and it actually didn't hit, you know, what we thought was spam or whatever, right? And so you might know if an action happens or doesn't happen based on if the content or the person is still even existing. You know what I mean? So we don't say to you, the reporter, hey, we just took down that really crappy guy that was harassing you. We don't really say that, but we might just take down the guy that was harassing you, and then you're like, oh, you know, thank goodness. So that's kind of the action that, you know, it's, it's not really like we're communicating that back to you. We just kind of are actionable. Okay. We have, we have a, an interesting question that, that just came in sure. from uh, Tina Niskanen. Uh, she asked, why do you close the comments on the Google Plus help pages so soon and not use any identifying hashtag on the answers you give allegedly elsewhere? You just state, quote, we're closing comments on this post so we can prioritize replying to the other incoming Plus mentions and shares we've been receiving instead of giving a hashtag people could search for. Interesting. So, oh wait, can you go back to that? Oh, okay. Yep, sorry, I, I, I left it back no, up. And This is and, fantastic. Uh, you know, this, it's kind of like having cue cards or something. And um, then this is this is on the uh, the event comments in case you need to to check it out later and, and refer back to Tina directly. Yeah, no, so great question, Tina. So one of the reasons why we started closing this, and I'm totally open to doing it differently and um, and talking to the team about it. So we started closing those comments because when there there's certain working hours, I think they're like nine to five, you know if you go look at the About section of the Google Plus Help page. Um, and so during the nighttime, we didn't necessarily want people asking lots of questions and expecting someone to rapidly respond. And so we wanted to set expectations. Um, you know, when, when you have people uh, on, in the page managing notifications and you have people that are even responding from, you know, Six weeks ago, someone finds this post, and you got to like go find that post on your page, and all these things. It just started to get kind of complicated with how we could organize the conversation back and forth, um, managing it through notifications. So, um, so I think it was for us. It's really just to simplify the interactions for each post. Um, you know, I I could see us. You know, the, the team behind it, even though it's not me, Sky, and Dory anymore, the team behind it is still relatively small, even though it is a different team. And so, um, you know, I have empowered uh, some of the helpful Google Plus uh, community members to go and respond there on our behalf when we can't. Um, but the 24-hour mark is, again, mostly just for, you know, kind of saying what we need to say, answering some questions, and moving on. Now, what is also interesting is in that 24-hour time period, you can say things like, hey, it'd be really great if you made a post about circle management or something like that. And then we're like, great. Then we can go and make a post the next day, and it can become an even richer conversation. Um, so that's what, that's what I would say. Does that answer the question fully? I'm just looking at it again. Oh, identifying Thank hashtag. You. I thought that was a really, I think that's a really interesting idea. Um, you know, some of the, sometimes the Google Plus help page responds to public, extended, or private plus mentions um, or shares. So I can definitely take it back to the team that we could do hashtag Google Plus help responded or something like that so that people can look at the answers that the Google Plus help page does. So then you're, you have a rich kind of uh, educational opportunity if you look in that stream. It's a cool idea. We've never thought of it. And, and I can't speak for Tina, but I think one of the other things you might want to do as part of uh, your, your closing response is remind people about the Google Plus Discuss community mm. and possibly provide a direct link to that community as a, as a source, as, a, as another resource yes. for getting their questions answered and for discovering new things they may not have known about Google Plus. Yeah, I love that. I think that's a great idea, too. Uh, you know, I think one of the things that we can do 
that I feel is incredible for one another that you just did to Tina is saying yes and. Uh, it's, a, it's a common practice in theater, it's a common practice at Google and it's, it's actual, well, it's becoming a more common practice. So instead of saying, oh that idea sucks, you say yes and, you add to it. And that's how you go from a, an idea that changes the world by 10% to 10x improvement. So I, I really like that you did that and, and I'm even more receptive to her brilliant idea because you made it even more brilliant. So thank you. So, so Tina, um, I hope we, we address some of your issues uh, and if not, please feel free to comment and everyone else, we are trying to to collect their co all of your comments. We've seen an awful lot, so I apologize in advance that we haven't gotten to all of them. Um, on, and, that note, Alan, to, like to, on that note, I'd like to get to some of the comments or the, the questions for Natalie that were submitted on her post when she shared the event for this program. Um, can we do that? Uh, um, some real, of them have been while you're, while ahead, you're switching Dan. to that, um, Dan, I just wanted to say, Natalie, I really I, I have used Google Help a lot, and I really do appreciate um, every everything that you guys have done um, to help to help me out. And um, yeah, absolutely, it's been uh, it, it's been interesting. You know, like you said, you know, it's um, and we can always do better. You know, like I love this idea to make that closing statement even better. You know, maybe what we do is we try and keep them open for forty eight out forty eight hours, right? Maybe what we try to do is, right now we're only doing Thursday Hangouts office hours with Dory. Maybe we do, you know, office hours with one more community manager. You know, I'm, I'm always open to crafting a community experience that helps people out and makes people want to come back and feel like Google Plus is the place for them. So I'm always open to those ideas, whether people want to plus mention me or do a limited share or do a YouTube video. Like, I don't know, you can get creative with it. Uh, you know, I, I'm these resources I'm building because of the insights that I'm hearing and um, you know as the community manager team for Google Plus expands we're gonna have you know even more fresh ideas more people coming in um, that want to listen to to all these great insights so definitely use Google Plus help mention them and uh, mm -hmm. they'll respond and, and they'll start plus wanting you now uh, because of Pam because uh, <laughs> Pam will will troll you if you don't I'm just kidding but, you um, better no believe it. This is a troll-free zone, guys. Troll-free zone. No, 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 no. Oh yeah, I'm not no, going to troll Natalie. I'm going to troll Craig or Dan. Yeah. So yeah. I, I agree with. I mean, there are limited. Re I, I'm cool with it. There are limited resources you have. It's a free service, right? I don't expect you to fly out to Virginia, you know, to help me with my Google Plus problem. But at the same time, um, uh, or. or be you want to be able to respond to the new stuff as, as it comes in so people aren't feeling neglected and if you shut it well, down then then you're not dealing with all of the I mean the follow-up can go for months I have uh, yeah. stuff that you know uh, you did something recently and I noticed I, I get a lot of activity on posts might be a year and a half old and that yeah. started about a month ago or something so I, I, I can totally I, I totally get what you're saying and yeah, and, and I get there. that too. I'll get people that will find some really old post of mine. I don't, I don't know how they do it, but I'll get a plus mention, and I'll think it's some new urgent issue. And I'm like, 2011. I'm like, for real? Like, how did you guys even find that post? You know, and and so I, I, there's some part of me. There are, I think in Google Groups we do something like this, where after, you know, like 90 days or something, the post is locked, and you actually can't engage on it. Um, I think it, it just helps post owners manage things in a better way, um, specifically when you're dealing with high volumes. Um, and the Google Plus help page definitely gets a lot of volume. And I think once we take, you know, Alan's idea of promoting it even, you know, more in a in a better way, you've got to find some some good ways for that. Okay, so uh, what I want to do, so, uh, Natalie, um, is I, uh, I've got a, go I've ahead, got a Alan. bunch of questions that were were from Natalie's post. I, I pulled a few. I've got um, them. Okay, okay, I've got them in the doc, right? But you can, if you can pull them up, that, can you, that'd be even pitch, better. Pitch me a fun one. We've been talking about abuse and help. Yeah, Do you have a fun one? tell me about it. Oh my gosh. Yeah, what I, is the I, secret I, I, roadmap? I like Michael, like, oh. give her something good. I've from, got a couple uh, from, of good from, ones. From, uh, from, uh, from, from uh, Joe Troll, what, what is the secret roadmap for the next three years for Google Plus? <laughs> Could you please lay <laughs> yeah. it out for oh, oh, uh, slides there were would be appreciated. a lot of questions asking for, for where features are and what numbers are and, you know, Give us, give us the answer that I know you're going to give us on that. 
Yes, and <laughs> on, on, on any any you know on, on any uh, you know feature request, what what's the the standard answer you're going Hold to Hold on, well, maybe it's something we can all say together because I'm pretty sure we all know the response. We have no uh, we have no numbers to release at this time. We have no announcements no numbers on. Numbers to release we, at this time. That's a good one. <laughs> that's for uh, Nate Swan who predicted that features. answer. Nate Swan, our our good can't friend, can't comment and, on speculation and, yeah. and rumors. And I definitely, I mean, if I told you what our three-year roadmap was, you know, if Vic wanted to tell me, like, would you really want to know? I mean, because it's kind of cool. You got to admit, when me? you wake up and Google Plus is totally different and crazy. Well, awesome. We know it's going to be different. Huh? We know it's going to be different. I mean, we like switching it up. We like making it more beautiful. We like making it more easy. And and I think that you know. <clears throat> Our team is only going to get more inventive over time, and we like surprising you. <laughs> and you're very um, good at it. So, so the follow-up, so the follow-up for that one is we we do have a question that was like that, but but before that question, uh, Louise Roca, yeah, uh, asked, how often do Googlers go roller skating? Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, names. I saw that one. So there is a. A roller skating rink in Redwood City, which isn't too far. I will tell you that mm. it smells just like the roller skating rink that you used to hang out in when you were a kid. Like roller skating smell, like roller skating arena smell, like don't change, right? The bathrooms don't get any better. They still they're still funky. Um, so I went roller skating for a team offsite, and um, and you know basically we work so hard that sometimes we don't get time to spend. Um, quality time with each other. And so when you guys see Googlers going on some wine tour or going to the beach or something like that, it's actually because we're trying to bond as a family. Because we're going through such incredible experiences together that can also be really stressful, you need to take some time to de-stress. You know, like I will get up at 6.30 in the morning and ride an hour and a half to work. Then I have a full work day where I'll leave work usually around 6.30. So I'll get home around 8. Now, is that and in the then, Google bus? <laughs> yeah, right? I do take a Google bus. Um, and so I'll get home around 8, and at that point, I want to hang out with my boyfriend, right? And so and I'm trying to you know, digest from my day, but a lot of times what happens is I get on my computer until I fall asleep. So there's not a lot of off-screen time. And so I think when, when we go on these roller skating trips, it's really that work-life balance. It's getting to know each other. Um, and, and so I don't think we go roller skating all that often. Um, you know, I will say that uh, I always love a good adventure. So, um, you know, I, I look forward to more roller skating. Um, what, what is the most fun thing that you've done as part of a corporate outing with Google? Uh, and you can interpret I'm fun as any way you want. I'm trying to think of the ones I can talk about. <laughs> I was gonna say. Didn't you? you, guys, you, didn't, you, you Alan, didn't, didn't the entire Google team, Google Plus team, have like an offsite to Hawaii in year one? The cruise. I can't confirm nor deny that. <laughs> I, I know a bunch of people on the Google Plus team all like were quiet for a few days and like all came back with. Jason, you got it. You got to be. Okay, that can. <laughs> yeah, Jeff, you guys got to be impressed that that uh, Alan stumped Natalie, who gets three hundred thousand questions a day, with a question. <laughs> That's pretty impressive. Yeah, no, you know, I, I'm trying to think of, like, the most fun. Um, I had a lot of fun as a community manager at Google. Um, <laughs> you know, the most fun group thing. I mean, roller skating was pretty awesome, especially because you think that people can do tricks through your legs and they really can't and you just fall. Um, I, I really like, actually, the moments when um, Googlers become such close family of mine that we go do things outside of work with each other. You know, I used to, you know, very, very candidly, very honestly, I used to keep work friends very separate from like real life friends, and they've started to blend, right? So um, my friend Dave Cohen and his beautiful wife Erin and their baby Leah, excuse me. Um, you know, I was I went to their wedding and I felt very privileged because Dave and I only knew each other through work, and now we've gone camping um, at Pinnacles uh, National Park together. We've done. We've had more adventures with one another, and I think that is where I've had a lot of the most fun. Are more of these personal memories with people that um, you know I've worked with, 
I've also, you know, met a fair share of celebrities, which always is kind of silly and weird, you know, because I'm not sure what surprises me yet. I'm so excited to one day meet Obama, like, so excited. That would probably freak me out. But other than that, um, you know. Yeah, you were actually in studio for the Will I Am hangout, right? I was. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, uh, Vic and I and Lauren Groves and Matt Waddell all flew down to Los Angeles together, and we hosted the first hangout on air with Will I Am, and that was a trip. That was that was pretty wild. Like I'm I'm not gonna lie, uh, you know, hanging out with Will I Am. He's a super cool dude, super laid back and easygoing. Invited all of his friends into the studio, and we're there and. I kind of can't believe it because I'm like, did I just fly in less than 12 hours notice down to LA and back, you know, for a couple of days just to hang out with Will I Am and make sure this goes smoothly? And um, and I did, and I got to help out some of his musician friends get profiles on Google Plus as I'm sitting there in the studio with him, you know. So like that was a great, great thing that happened, uh, and I sometimes still can't believe it. Okay, so we have got a couple slightly more serious questions, but still oh, both of them phrased. Serious. Okay. Only slightly, but no, both of I, I, I like how both of them are phrased, though at least. All right. Uh, so this one from from Ralph, are feedbacks read anonymously, or do you get to hear? And here is one from Keith, and a collective groan will go up from the table <laughs> or or from oh, the bullpen. Oh, should I answer this honestly? Hmm. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for uh, that question, Ralph. So actually, every time uh, someone submits send feedback. We do, you know, if it's, uh, you know, Robbie or Bobby or Susan or whatever, we do know what profile sent that sent feedback. So, um, and, and what's great is that with that, we get to, you get to tell us a little bit about the browser information. You get to tell us a little bit about uh, this, you know, we can usually tell what, um, you know, OS you're on when you tell us. And we get uh, some good information from that report. So, um, it's funny, we don't really go through send feedback and all groan because somebody sent it in for the hundredth time or anything like that. Um, you know, we, we mostly, we don't really look at it per person. Um, I think per person could be interesting, but we look at it per issue, right? So we'll, can, we can see if everyone's having an issue with this particular profile picture issue, we can be like, oh, we got like 40 profile picture issues. Oh, this, this is like probably a pretty hot issue. So let's go and look at that, right? And then we have all that expanding evidence that I was telling you about, um, which is which is totally fine. Now, it's funny, when, when people will plus mention me, I, I, I definitely have my regulars, right? Well, they will give me feedback over and over and over again, and they will plus mention me to every post for a very long time, and I'm like, oh my god, this is like totally, if you can imagine, I'm totally filling up my inbox, right? And so the thing about being a community manager is even when you receive those things, you got to finesse it. You know, you gotta be graceful, and I think that's a really important part of this role is being the empathetic, acknowledging, listening, non-reactive, very pleasantly responsive person, and that can be not always the easiest task. Um, but I think it's vital to not only keeping a great face for you as the community manager, but you're holding the community in your hands, and if you're this violent frustrated, reactive, stop doing that kind of person, you don't really get to develop trust and love and compassion with your community, and I think that's really important. So um, even when people are doing that to me, I might groan a little, but I'm still going to be really nice because we all, we all just want to be heard. You know, we all just want to be understood. So even if it's something really ridiculous, my goal is to help de-escalate and, and really hear you and communicate that effectively without any bias. So I have a quick question, Natalie. A really sure. quick question. Yeah. Okay. Did you have to take a class or maybe several in effective communications or um, customer service? How yeah, how not to be an asshole to people who <laughs> <laughs> irritate you or whatever. You know, I don't think I took a class per se for my job, but I do a lot of different things that supplement me as a community manager. So um, as an example, I have taken a compassion training course at Google uh, through Stanford University, and, um, and that was more for myself. I, w I wanted to just learn how to 
be more empathetic with the world and, and listen to people and generate compassion and that bled over into my work and it really supports my work and uh, I have done so Meng who has the title of Jolly Good Fellow at Google he wrote a book called Search Inside Yourself I've taken that course so you know I think when you look at even the principles of active communication, nonviolent communication, all these different styles, all these things are kind of in my various subcultures and spiritual communities and are also amazing tool sets for being a community advocate. And um, you know, even the times when I was telling you when people really get mad at me and, and start harassing me or struggling with me, um, you know, there is a opportunity to let that kind of just run you don't say I am pissed off, you could just say I feel pissed off, right, so then you're not embodying that moment. But then also when we do start to have struggling moments in our writing communication to one another, we stop breathing a little bit. So you might notice after a really painful email, you're like, oh. And it's because you haven't been breathing for the last five minutes because you're so stressed, right? So what I will do is I will actually take really big deep breaths from my belly. This sounds really hippie, so just roll with it. Um, I take really big breaths from my belly, which activates the parasympathetic nervous system, which activates the serotonin, which is like the feel-good chemical that happens in your brain. And I will actually allow myself to feel better um, by taking deep breaths. And that's why when you get stressed out, people say take deep breaths. There's some science behind that. So I think even learning the neuroscience of how you choose to react or respond based on human nature allows you to be a more compassionate centered person in all situations. So I guess I would say as a community manager I will and I actually am teaching some of these things to other community managers um, I would say it's not in the community manager manual but it should be and these are things that I would suggest to any person wanting to do community development work. Well I have a question Natalie and I'd, I'd actually like to ask you the same question that I asked to Vic when he was here on our two year anniversary show and, and you know I'd like to hear your point of view and you, you can be as terse or as candid as you wish and then right. I'll tell you his response. Okay, right. uh, Being someone who's been here since the very beginning and again seeing all the highs, highs and lows, ups and downs, happy and sad times, uh, hindsight being 2020, in growing the Google Plus network and the community, what would you have done differently? And what did Vic say? I'll tell you afterwards. I'd like to hear your version, and then I'll tell you Vic's version. All right. What would I have done differently? Um, you know, I was actually meditating on this question um, a bit more earlier. Um, one of the things that I am really passionate about is women feeling safe on the Internet. As a woman myself, who has not always felt safe on the Internet, it's very important to me. Um, so at the beginning of Google+, um, you know, and it, and it still happens this way, right? Um, in Google+, Plus, one of the things that I would want to change or wish that we had implemented differently is how people are notified of new people circling them because you don't really know why, right? That you don't have, someone isn't, isn't expressing an intention, right? They're just like, boom, edit, yeah, edit that person. You're like, who are these people? Right? I think that when you're making a connection with someone, there's always some shared interest or some intention. Even when you're meeting people at a party, someone says, oh, Natalie works at Google. You work at Microsoft. You guys are both techies. Boom. You know, or whatever it is. You know? There's something that bonds you. And I think that that expression of that bond is very important when trying to make meaningful connections. And I don't know if we've done that right yet. And especially when you are a woman who is sharing her voice publicly on the web, which hasn't always been a well-received thing on the web. I, I, I would still say some, we're getting there. It's getting better, but you know, when, you know, I, I think back to the 90s, and you know, women on webcams were called cam whores, and women on cameras, you know, that wasn't something you did. And so for me, when I'm saying, hey, ladies of the world, get on a hangout, do this public stuff, they're like, I don't know. Like, is it safe? Like, who's going to watch? Right? Like, I think that there are more things that I can do and there are more things that we can do so that people know who's watching them or who's following them so then they feel more comfortable. Um, because ultimately, when you feel comfortable, when you feel safe, you want to stick around in that environment. And I want to offer that kind of safe environment 
to everyone and especially to demographics that don't always feel comfortable being there themselves online. That's a great answer. Well, and I, I completely agree with you because my time zone, me being all the way out here in Guam, is during the days when Google Plus Messenger was still around, I got invited to many, many, many messenger conversations by horny Middle Eastern men I've never met before, which was Whoa, really weird. Me too! Yeah. <laughs> and me too, guys. Uh, no, well, I'm, I'm sure all of it. Yeah. No, but well, okay. So what Vic said that was that was a fantastic answer, by the way. So thank you for that. Um, yeah, no very honest. Too. Vic's answer was when I asked the same thing to him when we did our two-year anniversary show. He said, right off the bat, he wasted no time. He said, "That's easy." He was, "I only wish we had started earlier." Ah, uh, yeah. And that that was it. It was short. It was like he goes, he goes, "I just wish we had." He goes, "We've been thinking about this a really long time." He goes, "I wish we would have jumped on it earlier." And that's the, that's the only thing. He goes, "Absolutely no regrets," but. Now, Natalie, on that on that topic, yeah. does that mean that there's some kind of a timeline here? Does that mean that you all are kind of in a hurry to do things? I mean, if 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 Vic wishes that he just started earlier, then that that means that maybe you want to do things as fast as possible. So we we move really fast um, on on the Google Plus team, and I think um, I don't think there's a timeline. We're definitely not going anywhere. You know, for <clears throat> for us, it still feels, and I think even for me, it still feels very much like the beginning. You know, Vic will say that, and he'll say, you know, we're just getting started. And, I mean, how old is Facebook? I started using Facebook in 2006, 2007. Like, they have a lot of time ahead of us. Like, if we're just going to talk about other social networks, I think I joined Twitter in 2006. I don't actually know the start dates of a lot of these companies, right? And we're the new kid on the block. Like, we definitely still are, you know, new kids. So I think that there's still a lot of room for us to grow and um, expand into, you know, new growth opportunities. And I, I just, I don't think that it's about thinking where the end is. It's, it's looking at how much more we have to do, how much more we have to go. And I think that's really exciting because the, the community of Google Plus gets to chart that journey with us. And I think that when I look at other companies, you know, and I've got mad love for people over at Facebook and Twitter. I have a lot of friends at those companies. You know, we are sitting here in a hangout on air, you know, or on posts, and we're talking to all of you about where do you want to go? What do you want to see? And as a user of both Facebook and Twitter, no one ever did that for me. Right? So I think it's a far more interesting product where we get to chart that journey together as opposed to having to just fall in line with whatever happens. So, um, so, I think, so I think that it's uncharted waters, and we're just starting out at that, at that journey. Kind of along those lines, Natalie, how much do you act as a, a community manager, uh, not just for Google+, Plus, but for Google as a whole? And how much do you represent Google Plus users to, to other divisions within Google, kind of trying to say, look, here's where Google Plus will integrate nicely with, with your service? Yeah. No, I actually do a lot of, I have, actually have quite a few side projects. You guys mostly see me as, like, Le Google Plus, which is totally true, right on. Uh, I also have two passion projects that I work on, and I have integrated Google Plus into both of them. And I will actually have teams reach out to me, um, you know, whether it's about internet freedom or if it's about, you know, a new product that's about to launch. And they'll say, hey, how do we do this Google Plus? Like, how do we, how do we fully utilize it like you've been doing it or how the team's been doing it? Show us the ropes, right? Um, and I think that's really cool. Uh, I think it's neat to kind of be an advisor or uh, counsel to that. I've also introduced a lot of the, a lot of really interesting stories and, and people on Google Plus. I've introduced them to those teams to make connections for more people. Because as I said, my job is really about making people more awesome through Google Plus. And I want to expand the community into Google and not just keep you guys just on Google Plus. You know, you start on Google Plus and I want to see you grow. Um, so the two passion projects that I work on at Google one is called Women Tech Makers, and Women Tech Makers is about helping um, raise the visibility and impact of technical women and to help more women make an impact through technology. So, um, so I've integrated Google Plus into that plan. Um, I have a, a public Google Plus community um, called Women Tech Makers. This is the first time I've ever talked about it. Uh, I haven't even put it out on my profile before. Um, it's a fabulous community of 570 women. There's probably like 10 guys. 
and they're in there creating a supportive uh, environment for, for women um, in tech. And then my second uh, passion project is that I teach 10x innovation thinking to K through 12 students through solve4x.com, which is under Google X. So, you know, how do we get, you know, uh, a fifth grader to think of the next Google Glass or the next self-driving car? How do I get people to think big? And so with a, when we talk about moonshots at Google, we talk about how it has to be, um, you have to be solving for a huge problem uh, with breakthrough technology to get to a radical solution. And so I'm starting out using game storming techniques and design thinking and human-centered design and all these different ways to get our young ones to be our innovators. And so I've been working with that team on how we can integrate Google Plus into that as well. And you know, since you bring that up, I now get to ask you the same question I asked Vic. Um, and that is, you know, there's Google's had a lot of focus recently about the moonshots, uh, uh -huh. about the the big, the grand vision, the the how do you you do the the ten times improvement. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, how do you, how do you how do you see you nearly needing to deal with the day to day improvements? Uh, that need to be done. I mean, Google Plus still needs those incremental 10% at a time changes. How do you balance the two? And how do you see people, people in general, needing to balance the two? Since this is one of your side projects. Um, that's interesting. So it's kind of, kind of different. Um, I wish my friend Amar Gandhi, or um, if you guys all know <laughs> David Bezbrus, we call him Bez. You know, uh, you guys probably have them in your circles. They would be great people to answer this question because they are, um, you know, head of engineering and they're the ones that are prioritizing the product and things like that. So I, I wish that they were here to answer that question honestly. Well, but, but you're in an interesting position because you're the front line at the people who are saying, hey, I need, at, at both of these issues, you see the people saying, hey, I need this 10% improvement because these are the things that are broken. Sure. And you're also yeah. hearing the people saying, hey, I need Google Plus to integrate with you know, driverless cars in some way. <laughs> yeah, so, um, so all of the feedback that we get from the community is all funneled up to the product team, right? And when I say the product team, I mean the Google Plus team. Um, so all of it, whether it's 10% or it's 10x, all of it is heard. and then it's kind of up to, you know, Bez and, you know, you guys all know Chi Chu, you know, all the all of our VPs of engineering and Vic and Bradley, you know, it's up to them to um, work with our product managers, with our designers, to really craft that 10%, 10x, you know, 25%, you know, whatever it's going to be. Um, it's up to them to craft that in and prioritize that in a really good way. So, um, so... For me, I am kind of the middleman. I am the messenger of the genius of the ideas, and I get to bring it up to them. And there are some situations where I definitely lay way more, uh, you know, weight or uh, immediacy, um, especially around things that are broken. Um, when there, are, when there's, in and Jonathan can really speak to this too, is that people use different use Google Plus differently based on their new or their established or their like pro, you know, I'm just going to do this pro. Uh, and so Jonathan will, um, will, will speak to this a lot because some of the use cases aren't ideal for hundreds of millions of people. Hundreds of millions of people probably won't use it, but five people will or ten people will. And so we really have to, to think about things in terms of how it affects the product. You know, what is going to be the uptake of, of something like that? Is it too complicated? You know, what is the design like? Will it flow? You know, we have to take all those things into consideration when you're thinking of like 10x to or 10%. I have a quick growth related question. You, uh, you, we'll touched on, you touched on that a little earlier. And um, I have a community website here in Frederick called frederick.com. It's, it's, it's just a community portal website, if you will. And I go out and I cover a lot of events. I take photos, videos, and so forth at the events. I give out my business cards. I tell the people they can come to various places to get the photos. One of those places is Google+. Mm -hmm. And most of the people, I have to tell you, go to Facebook to get the photos. That's one of the places that I put them. I also mm -hmm. put them on Flickr. 
Um, so I give them various choices as to where they can go and download their photos. And I put links to all of those from the article that I create on my website. And so what are your plans for getting what I call the regular real people, not the techies, not any of those people, the people that I run into here in Frederick County, Maryland, that they just live on Facebook. Um, mm -hmm. Are there plans to get them to come over? Yeah, um, so, it's an, so it's an interesting question. Um, you know, I think for me, when I was talking about helping people be the best people that they can be on Google+, Plus, I think that sometimes I feel in doing that, you then, Craig, go and share that story with someone at your local coffee shop. Where you see someone doing something where they're taking a bunch of pictures and they're trying to upload it in some horrible uploader for some other company. And you're like, hey, you know, this is actually a lot easier if you do it via Google+. Plus. You know, I think that for me, I, we're wanting to empower people to be those local, you know, if you want to say like representatives or local evangelists in some way. So if there's a way that I can empower you in Fredericksburg to be that person, like let me know. You know, there are people that host their own photo walks. We don't sponsor those, right? It's, it's people are doing them out of the love for it because they really, you know, came to the product. Or, you know, sometimes we do have meetups for Google Plus Local, and the marketing team will do that sometimes. Um, you know, and so a lot of the, the hurls, we've never, we don't sponsor hurls. Those are all done for the love. You know, so if you think, all right, I'm going to host like a Google Plus photo coffee night at my local, you know, cafe. That's cool. I'll send you some stickers. I'll send you something so that you feel like you've got a little extra something in your back pocket, you know, and um, and we can do that. Like that's, that might be more scalable. I think, you know, there's a, a team on the Google, on the Google Plus marketing team, we do have different people who focus on different verticals. So say if you knew of a cool distillery or a cool brewery in your area, and you're like, man, this would be, you guys would be amazing on Google+. Plus. You guys could do virtual tours of your distillery. I will hook you up with the person on the Google Plus marketing team and I will plus mention them in and say, hey, help this brand or help this person get big on Google+. Plus. Help, help them share their story. Let's get it as far and wide as we can. And I think, you know, however we can help, we, we can, but, but it's, it's less about let's drag someone by their pigtails from Facebook to Google+. Plus. I don't think we need to do that. I think people, you know, of, of the hundreds of millions of users that we have, I think that it's also up to us to go and evangelize our joy for what we love so much and depend less on the company to go out and pull users over. We don't really do that. I, I agree that, that, that we should be evangelists, and I am. I bring a lot of people over. but. I can also tell you that some of them don't really feel welcome when they come over. Some of them feel like there's a bunch of techies here and a bunch of early adopters that sometimes don't necessarily welcome them with open arms. I wish that were different, but I do hear that kind of feedback sometimes. Are there plans in the works for almost there being a welcome wagon uh, type of thing when people come into Google+, Plus, especially if they come over from Facebook? to really greet them with open arms and, and make them really feel welcome and if they look like they might be inclined to leave to kind of approach them and, and ask them, oh, you know, why might you leave? Like for example, if I had a restaurant and I had customers coming in and they were they came a couple times and then they weren't coming back or they, they weren't using it as often or whatever, I might want to wonder why and, and try to retain them any plans along those lines? So, you know, I, I don't necessarily think that everyone should go out and, and, and start a new account, but I think it would be a really interesting exercise for you guys to go and create a new Google Plus account and see what it's like. Because probably since you've joined, we've done a lot to create that very welcoming experience. Um, and, and, you know, like I haven't created my Google Plus account since, you know, June 28, 2011. And so I don't know of those things as a member of Google+. Now, if you were to go through that process, you would see that we suggest interesting people for, and brands and, and communities for you to follow. Uh, we will teach you how to make your first post. We will tell you about some of the cool features. We will, there's actually a tutorial 
You know, there's all these things that are that kind of welcome wagon, so to speak. And I think, you know, what I love doing is when someone is new to Google Plus, um, is, and I've done this for many people, uh, someone will say, oh, you know, my friend loves photography. And I'll say, okay, great. And I give them my shared circle of photographers to get them started. Right? And so I think that sharing, when you're saying that people are feeling unwelcome because they feel like there's too many techies, then we got to show them that there's not just techies here. Right? And, and how we can do that in a super easy way is just sending them a simple shared circle and saying, hey, follow these people. You'll really get into the vibe and start plus mentioning them that this is what plus mentioning is. And so I think that the more that, um, you know, we can also add a little bit of us into that welcoming process, it's great. But Google Plus does have, and we will continue to improve on that welcoming experience. Taking that a step further, I, um, you know, I used to get started link to do it over again. If nothing for, just see who's on the suggested user list. But um, yeah. taking that a step further, um, let's see his name. Jeffrey Hellman mentioned earlier um, about having a suggestion for new users joining Google Plus, why not have a part of an initial tour, like a walkthrough that actually connects them? What you, what you mentioned about starting a post, but taking an even a further step forward, it's like, why not have something interactive to show them all the different elements of Google Plus? Like, maybe pop them in a hangout with a video with all the awesome YouTube videos that there's out there, like, of using the different parts of Google Plus or having them do it interactively where they actually do it hands on. And doing it for school. I mean, there's many ways, but I mean, I think something interactive to show them all the different things about Google Plus for the first time would be an awesome way to and, get them and, started. And, I, and, and I, liked, I liked his idea. Oh, sorry. I liked his idea of um, why don't we put everyone in a hangout? I don't know Starting what. <laughs> I don't, yeah, I don't know what I would have done if I joined Google Plus and then I just fell into a hangout with all of you guys. I'd be like, uh, uh, <laughs> well, not, not a hangout. Not There's a, hangout a lot with us, of people like, that don't like to be on camera. But yeah, but but I mean, I think it's an interesting idea, right? Like, what I think the essence of what he's saying, and, and I could be wrong, but is is how do we get them to have that magical, intimate, face-to-face -face experience that really has created these deeper bonds, yep. right? And I think like the shared circle could be like the very basic to, you know, a week later maybe you know the Google Plus team or the Google Plus help team says, "Hey, do you want to do you want to learn what a hangout is by joining a hangout with a member of the Google Plus staff?" You know, a like absolutely. That would be a awesome. Absolutely. And or volunteers. I mean, if you have right. you talk about evangelists, if you have like a, a white list of of welcoming party individuals, right? That that maintained hangouts all the time, round the clock. There was always a hangout available. And if a new person is coming in, they can choose to pop into that hangout and be welcomed and have any of their questions answered that they might have. My God, I, I'm sure you could get volunteers to to man a hangout like that around yeah. the clock. Yeah, and I and I and I think um, I think that could be really interesting. And and I want to share that because you know my team has been thinking a lot about that. Of you know how do we, we we're always looking how do you make people feel more welcome and inclusive into a really big community that they may or may not have an understanding about yet. And so I think um, I think this is a cool idea. You know, if we flushed that out some more, you know, that could be super awesome. And what? so I want to pitch that. And you know, in pitching that to the team, I'll be like, I heard I heard it here on this show that I got at least five volunteers that will do this. So we could. What we like to do at Google is we also like to run things as pilots or projects. You know, try it with a hundred people, see how that's received. Try it with five hundred people, see how that's received. And you test and you iterate, right? And so, um, you know, a, a great quote from um, from someone I learned it from my boyfriend is that uh, software isn't finished; it's only shipped, right? Yeah. So I think for us in that same vein, in the testing and iterating, I think it'd be cool to test this, see what happens. I, I, Monday I'd night love, at I'd 10. I'd love to be part of that, <laughs> yeah. Natalie. Mon actually, Monday night at 10 Eastern, I'll volunteer the 10 to 11 hour. <laughs> they can come into my hangout. Awesome. Pam, I love that you just transformed into a cat. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're like all of a sudden this very adult woman voice. <laughs> Here, I'll, I'll, I'll give you guys, this is kind of what, you're going to have to pardon me because my house is kind of messy. Pam, but, I'm going to uh, have to out to you. We, we had this quote from, from, your, uh, from your post earlier from somebody named Dan. Uh, did someone oh, mention uh, cats? Oh, wow, oh. that's a beauty. 
She's like what? looking at you guys like, what, what is going on? Oh my gosh, she's showing me off she again. She doesn't look like she wants to pose for a photo, does she? Um, hold on one second. She like, is she showing me off again? Remind me of Billy Wilson. She's she's clawing. She's keeping her claws on her pillow. <laughs> the Billy Billy Wilson's cat is crazy, man. So this is Olivia. I like the gloves. <laughs> Hold still, yeah. Olivia. Okay, Olivia, look up, look up. Look at the camera, okay. Olivia. One, two. I ain't got time for that. Got it. Wow. That, <laughs> look at those eyes. My. Somebody goodness. screenshot that. Oh, That's awesome. Got a, I got several it. Several screenshots now. <laughs> yeah. So I've had Olivia. Her eyes match your uh, blouse and your your hoodie. Yeah, so I've had Olivia since she was about the size of my hand. Um, her, name is, her name is Olivia Mason Penguin, and uh, and she's she's awesome. So I've always you know wanted to be in the New York Times for something really cool that I've invented. Um, Olivia's actually been in the New York Times a couple times. Um, they came and wrote articles about that co-working space that I told you guys I used to live in, and uh, she happened to be there. So she's just she'll cuddle with me um, for she loves she's a, a like a rag doll so she likes to just kind of be cozied up. But I'll put her back. Um, so one of the one of the things kind of tangential that I was going to mention to you all is that um, you know in in being at Google as a Googler and what what being a Googler means to me is, um, you know, not only one representing Google Plus and representing this community and finding ways to um, welcome people in and do things on behalf of people, but when, when I describe what it means to be a Googler, I will describe it as being elected to a position. Say you have the Senate or you have some type of representative position. And for me, I feel that I've been elected you know, by the people that supported me in, when I was a kid, to my mentors, that uh, to my ancestors, to my teachers, to everyone that I've been, I've been, I've been asked to be in this position. I mean, I worked really hard to get there too, but I've been asked to be in this position, put there, and it's up to me to represent all the people that can't be at Google, right? Like all the, all the women of the world that are like, man, I really wish I had more digital rights. All right. Well, as a woman who's passionate about digital rights, let me see what I can do while I'm here. So, you know, I think that, um, you know, I've on my Google Plus profile, I've always liked posting things about Google Plus and and helping people. And some of the times when I'm quiet and I don't post for a week, you could probably guess that I'm working really hard on something behind the scenes. I just can't tell you what it is yet. Um, so that's what you can think of my moments of silence that I'm on vacation, honestly. Um, and so for me, when I am, you know, posting things about Google+, it's for all of you, and then also I'm sharing a little bit of me, um, a little bit of the things that I'm really passionate about and the things that I want to move forward into the world. And I've always loved how that has been received on Google+, how um, I've never been on a platform before in my life where I've put out such radical posts or interesting ideas or little things that I'm like, man, I don't know if anyone's ever going to plus one this. Um, but ultimately, there's always some supportive comment, some supportive idea that's saying yes and to me or yes but. And, and I love that. And so, um, you know, I've, I've liked investing in this community with you as a community manager, but then also just as another person on the web. So I also want to thank everyone who has participated on my posts, who has shared their projects and ideas with me so that I can make them bigger and badder. Um, you know, I love I love sharing a little bit of me. And so even in this hangout, I realize I'm like, I think I've been a little quirky and, and like I'm sharing you guys my cat in my house. And I'm like, that's okay. Like, they've seen it before. So um, so thank you for also uh, receiving me through this process. And that's well, thanks for I being with us. I will stop yeah, thanks my for <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being with us. You're, you're absolutely gracious, and you know, like you're you're such a real person. Like I said, I mean, that's the the one thing that I think that you've really uh, shown through is like how how genuine you are and your actual concern and love for the community. So, you rock. Thanks. Thanks. Keep yes. me in mind, you guys. Decide to do that hangout thing. Oh my I god, the cat face is moving. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, it's animated. It's an animated cat. This is incredible. This is the future, it's, you guys. When you guys are talking about three, it's my Dell webcam. It yeah, does that. Del I can webcam. do this cat too. See, and it moves. Every time she or comes on. I can on, do a troll. Yeah, every, and every, it moves. That's the great ship one. Of Olivia and do it. I can even do this, and it. Okay, moves. that that one is weird. Like I didn't think the cat would. <laughs> falling weird. skies, falling skies. How about the the bulldog? What? Or this? Oh, cute little doggy. <laughs> This is one of the weirdest things I've ever seen on the internet. Yeah, every every time what? she every time she does it, we I always get questions like private posts, whatever. What is Pam using? You know, it's my Dell webcam. <laughs> it comes with this feature. See, I I don't know if I want everyone on the internet to come to Google Plus because like. <laughs> oh no, everyone. Natalie, you didn't say I that. I said that, and Alan not, told not me. Not the Google Plus oh. community manager. No, you know what? That, that's a, that's a really interesting. Somebody. <laughs> Somebody was asking me that recently, and I was like, they were like, do you want the entire internet to be like on Google Plus? And I was like, you know, Craig. maybe Craig. not, because you know, yes. it's, it's, got, it's got such a home. There's a lot of weird stuff on the internet. Um, oh. like, that, like that, like that. Really? Thing is very really? Strange. Also known <laughs> as Google awesome. Plus Week has a very diverse panel. I will just say it's awesome, but that was very weird. Um, and, I, and I think it's interesting that that came, that came with your Dell computer. Yep. It comes with most webcams, actually. Yeah. Yep. Like, could you imagine like people joining Google Plus and like, and like every all those people show up as like talking cats in a hangout? Like, <laughs> so weird. No, I think no, we Natalie, need a talking Natalie, cats weekly hangout. Natalie, it's a Saturday back thing. The, I think it should be a feature for hangouts. I think you guys should the, think about want that. Everybody, back to the we don't want everybody over here because we've actually had this discussion before. That's funny. Uh, yeah. My my thought on this is, if we get everybody over here. Mm -hmm. We can still choose who we want to circle and who we want to interact with. We mm -hmm. can control all of that. So I really don't see the downside to having everybody over here. Now I'm, you know, I'm selfish because I create content and I distribute it to the people, and I want as many people as possible to be able to get that content on whatever platform they they want to get it on. And so I'd like as many as possible to be able to get it here on Google Plus. But I mean, what what are your real thoughts on that? As far as do we really want everybody to come here? I do. Of course. I mean, like, see, like back here, I have a tea cart. Like, I would have like a tea party with everyone on the internet if I absolutely could. Um, I would love for everyone and their moms and their sisters and their newborns to be on Google Plus. Like, I think that would be super awesome. Um, you know, I I think that there's room for everyone on the internet. Um, I think that through that process of, of growing, we just need to, I think it's hard that like the culture of the web or the culture of a social network, um, that can feel very insular, right? And I feel like if there are new people that come, and there are new people that come to Google Plus every day, you know, just being able to have people feel inclusive and not laying rules on things, um, you know, this is the only way to do X. I think if we allow people to find how they want to express themselves on Google+, Plus, um, obviously within the terms of service and the guidelines, but like if we allow people to do that and we create that that atmosphere, like then why not have everyone? Um, so so yeah, I don't I I think that sometimes the community of Google+ Plus can feel very small because we only talk to the same people over and over and over again. There are tons of people on Google+. Plus who might just not be a power user or might not be a well-known user or they might not have been in the 100 shared circles. And I think, you know, finding those people and welcoming them or, you know, looking at communities of subjects that you've never even thought of before, that there aren't subjects that you necessarily gravitate to, but you get to explore all the other people that are out there besides your common circle um, and your common interests. I think that expands you into new places as well. It's not just about those people need to come find you. You know, how about you extend yourself? I'm not talking you, Craig, but extend yourself to people in a way that makes them feel like, oh, I am being received. I am being reached out to, and that's really neat. Um, yes. Natalie, so, let me follow up on that because because, because the, the the those of us who've been here for two years are kind of like the get off my lawn type of. Yeah, people like by who now, you know, too many, too many of them. No one wants to live next to that guy. 
Yeah, <laughs> that's true. That's but hang, true. Ha hang on, Natalie. Uh, let, let me ask you a question. Um, you, you talked about discovery, and um, w w w we all were frustrated when so many people in June and July of 2011 came on. They set up a profile. Maybe they have a profile pic, and, and they maybe posted one thing, and, and they haven't been back since. Um, that was frustrating. Uh, obviously, Facebook has the power of incumbency. That's where everyone is. Uh, but what can Google Plus do for local discovery? For example, like, like Craig Ships in Frederick, he posts local stuff and he engages. What can Google Plus do um, to fix the algorithm? So someone like Craig, if, if, if someone logs in in Frederick, Maryland, they would be pointed out to him or, or, or Craig would be pointed out to that user, the new user. Um, instead of... Uh, I know there's some localization of the suggested user list or other forms of discovery, but it, it seems to me that if, if Pam Adger is posting in Minifee, California and getting a lot of action on her posts, then if some new user signs up or logs in after a long time in Minifee, California, that she should pop up somewhere, um, almost like an ad, like, hey, you might find her interesting. Even if they, have, they have, you no seen, previous... have you seen my posts lately? <laughs> oh man! Do you really think that? The, do you really think that you know maybe? Uh, well, come on, Google knows everything. Maybe do about that us. on Friday or Saturdays or something. Saturday. Yeah, they they should they should do it not not on Thursday, um, but uh, that's a whole different thing that we don't want to scare Natalie on her first visit to our program. No, no, it's um, so it's it sounds to me like you want a like nearby stream but for desktop. No, I'm you saying can, that that. The, the real reason that people didn't, a lot of people stuck around, but a lot of people didn't. And the most common thing all of us heard was, none of my friends are here. Mm. Uh, my family's not here, none of my friends are here. They looked around, they couldn't find anything. Whereas if you right. log into Facebook, it's different. Um, uh -huh. Facebook ver very quickly dethroned MySpace. And MySpace had the power of incumbency, but Facebook did whatever they did right and killed MySpace. And then Google Plus comes along, and the big thing is it is, after all, a social network. I want to meet people to be social with, and if I am logging in for the first time, creating an account, and I'm in you know, Tucson or wherever, yeah. I should be presented not with um, Lady Gaga or, or me or Vic or whatever or you or Alan. I should be presented with people in Tucson who um, an algorithm could quickly determine this person, po th this person posts fairly regularly. They don't have a bunch of yeah. negative hits against them. There's yeah. engagement on their posts. That person yeah. should be presented to <laughs> me. And then all of a sudden I find interesting people locally or people who share my interests. Because you guys, I mean, we use Gmail. So you know that, you know, if Pam's interested in crochet or if Alan's, you know, is interested in Italian food, or you know, if I'm interested in karaoke or whatever, then why not find people of those interests and present them to me? It seems like Google, if nothing yeah, else, so is a search engine. It should be able to deliver relevant so what I'm uh, suggestions. Is, I'm hearing two different things. The first thing that I'm hearing is the suggestion to um, have a better way to surface the people that are truly your friends in your real life. No, right? like, I'm not saying that. But, I'm but, saying people you don't have a well, connection hold on, hold with. On, let me, hold on, hold on. He's going to go to both. Yeah. Okay. And and the second thing that I'm hearing is that you're wanting people that are near you locally to that may you have the common shared interest of a shared location and a shared yeah. potential interest and surface that person to you to help you feel more welcome from a local perspective. Yes. And, and when I, and what I was saying about the first thing is that you you propose two problems, and the first problem is that people come here expecting to see their friends and their family, but the solution was let's give them strangers. And yeah. so I think that you need to be able to solve for both of those problems with discrete solutions. So I think we have been working on that. If you go to um, when you go to your to your circles, it's like find people. And that is based on some of the social graph, right, that, that you have. 
And so we've, we've created an opportunity to really surface more of those richer personal contacts that you might know. So there's that. And, and then I think your idea of the local side, which, which is why I connected it more to the nearby stream of people near you saying and doing interesting things that may or may not be of interest, um, is an opportunity to help people feel not alone, right? So, so I definitely hear your proposed solution and I also think that that's not necessarily the solution for people that have the expressed intent to solve for where are my friends and where are my family because strangers aren't friends or family. And I think that that's something that most people when they think, oh, Google Plus is like Facebook. Well, Google Plus isn't like anything. We created it ourselves and Google Plus, a lot, for a lot of people, the story is that they have found uh, people of like-minded interests that they do find to be um, stimulating. And, and some people are cool with that. And other people only want to have that, you know, posting to circles, very intimate family experience, and that's cool too. So we just need to solve for both of those things. And we're always working to fine-tune both of those solutions. Yeah, and Dan, you know, like for me, right, like, I mean, the thing that gravitated me to Google Plus so much in the beginning, and I come from a place which is, you know, a very small community, we're so geographically distanced from everybody, so when I got on Google Plus, I was looking for really interesting content, and I'm kind of a Darwinist, right, so I, you know, it doesn't really matter to me if the, if the best possible content comes from down the street or somewhere halfway across the world, and admittedly, my friends and my family, who I've already got on Facebook, don't necessarily generate the best possible content. If I want to look up on something about robotics or on underwater basket weaving, if I find somebody on the other side of the world who I don't necessarily know already, and they've got good stuff, I'm going to circle them, and I'm going to enjoy their stuff, and I'm going to want to engage with them. That's, and that's, that's what really true, makes Jason. me enjoy. That's absolutely true, and that's why, and, and if you are that, you're a technical guy. Uh, you're an odd mix. You're hard to pigeonhole. You're, you're like an athlete <laughs> and a, sort of a tech geek. And, I'm a uh, mutt. A, a TV news anchor, right? So you're kind of so, so. this strange hybrid uh, person. Um, but uh, I just think local discovery could be better. I think if someone I just do, I just do whatever it, I do to get rent paid. It's then. simply, it, Dan, it's simply a question of normal people versus people like us. Okay, we're not normal. I hate to break the news to you all. <laughs> well, no, well, Dan, you, exactly. Normal. That's what that's Dan, what I'm no, saying. Wait. I mean, like, no, Dan, you, you know, you, now, you said it. Ve you said it very perfectly at the beginning. And Natalie, I, I'd like your very, um, very simple assessment of Dan's um, theory because Dan said in the very early days of Google Plus, he goes, "I, I think Google Plus is maybe the Mensa." of social networks and he said that way back then because there is a certain level of sophistication and of uh, I would an, esoteric, an, eso wait, an esoteric nature to, uh, to the content that people um, post there and you know people make you know jokes about it and they say okay well Facebook is the every person's social network and Google Plus is you know like it's very highbrow in, in that regard that I, en I enjoyed but you know like how, how would you feel about that about Google Plus being the Mensa or you know the NPR of social systems. It's interesting. I mean, I think that with the way that we um, rolled it out as an invite only, it started with Googlers and Googlers friends. So I think that's probably where some of that came from because I love NPR and like I'm not gonna lie. You know, like I and and so for me, um, when it when I think people felt it was highbrow, I think also it's when people were really using it as a long format platform, right? People were writing these really long posts. And, you know, companies like Medium um, have started to capitalize on that notion of not short. So we went from the extreme of like live journal to, uh, to Twitter, and now we're bouncing back to, to long format, and Google Plus is somewhere in the middle. Um, and people at the time were really seeing us as this platform for self-expression, especially in the long, long um, form format. So I think that esoteric, highbrow, uh, intellectual nature, I think, came from perhaps the seed of Google Plus and, and our friends, or Googlers and our friends and our friends of friends and how it went out to the world. And then because maybe we had started, I don't know, I'm speculating here, maybe a lot of people had started writing those long format posts, people were like, oh, I can only participate if I really have something to say. And the world, it's hard to be a writer. It's hard to necessarily express your thoughts in a way that is like, you know, three sentences in a paragraph form, you know, wanting to have correct grammar. All of that seems really intimidating. 
you know, especially when you're coming from a 140 character world or from a world where your mom doesn't care what you say or how you say it, right? So I think that that might have been intimidating. Could have been. Um, I is, think that... It, it is weird. You do, you do sort of have a different decorum or, or feel pressure to up to, to a certain level. If, if you're a higher profile account, you, you feel it more huh. so. But um, yeah, I behave differently on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. Um, I will throw out some random thing. Now I don't care. I mean, I'll, I'll do it, you know, whatever. But you do sort of feel that pressure. And, um, but I just, my point is this. My mom is into quilting. She's 75. My dad's 75. He's into amateur radio. Okay. So I think if my mom logs in in Steven City and both of them have logged in or whatever and neither one of them really regularly use it. Uh, and I'm an evangelist. I, I push it all the time. Craig Ship pushes it all the time. He literally got an account blo uh, kicked, uh, deleted from Facebook because he was uh, promoting Google Plus so much. <laughs> so he's 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 like a, a victim of Google Plus in, in a way there. Um, uh, but I just, if my mom's into quilting, and let's say she has a Gmail account, you guys know that she's into quilting because you know you run her email account. You could. Anonymous, I mean, not like a person deciding an algorithm. When she logs in for the first time or logs in after a long time or just periodically logs in, why not highlight right in her stream you might like, you know, um, in the same way that Google Ads does. Uh, if they find someone else in the area of Stephen City, Virginia or Winchester, Virginia, whatever, who's in, who also, you know, sends emails about quilting or, or amateur radio in the case of my dad, why not highlight those people? An algorithm could easily detect this is a legit profile. It's not got reports of spam. Uh, they post this many things, um, and they get interaction. They get plus one shares, you know, that sort of thing. <laughs> it didn't require human involvement. That would bring relevant suggestions of people and, and pages that are interesting to this person, and I just think that would go a long way, and I don't see that. I mean, I use yeah. Gmail. And I never see suggestions in my stream of local people. There's like one local guy, Gregory, a uh, great guy who uh, is active. And, and, and you know, we, we, you know he, he watches the show and comments and stuff. And he's awesome. I know him in real life. But, like, I just wish there was more local discovery because that's where Facebook is very strong. And I think that that is, is one of the uh, – help me out, Craig. Well, no, there, there's also the bi-directional model of Facebook in between um, Google, which Google Plus, which more resembles Twitter, because you can follow someone but not necessarily have them follow you, whereas Facebook, you have to have that, that two-way stream. Like, I want to be your friend. Okay, you confirm me. If not, you know, I, I'm probably never going to see your stuff. Well, you know, so, face, Facebook started that's the beauty out. Of it. Facebook started out hyper-local, right? Harvard, that's it, you know? And they got on there. Then another school. It was very local. It was people close. And then it grew out that way. And so that was sort of like its DNA. Whereas Natalie already explained that the, the DNA of Google Plus was, was different. It wasn't based on a location. It was based on Googlers and then Googlers friends, which of course they're all over the place. Um, so maybe that's something that Google has to look at is you, you've gotten kind of down this path where it is a bunch of techies and it is a bunch of verticals like photography and, and so on and so forth, but it doesn't have as much, it, does, it doesn't seem like to me like it has as much a focus on local. I get a ton of interaction on my content on Facebook, my local, hyper-local content. I mean, just sharing the photos, uh, plus it commenting, just the whole nine yards. <laughs> And nothing on Google. And I will, I will say, so, so a couple things here. We're coming up on two hours, and I do want to make sure that I spend some time with my family tonight. Um, so I, I'll answer this question, and then I actually have one ending question for all of you. Um, so, you know, I, I don't want to make too broad sweeping of generalizations. I don't think I have, and so I want to just make sure that I, I touch on this, that, you know, I'm not saying that Google Plus is all techies or specific verticals. I think that us as everyone sitting in here is a power user that sees only what we want to see. And I, there are a lot of people on Google Plus that we do not see that are not techies, that are not in a particular vertical only existing from the suggested user list. 
we have people from all over the world, from all different walks of life, and we just might not have taken the time to see them or connect with them in Hangouts or anything like that. So, um, you know, I think that two years ago, you know, when we, you know, launched in this invite-only space, you know, like that was a seed, but we can't blame that seed that it was, you know, we only planted this one because it grew and then it, and then it germinated and then it blossomed and like all those things, all those blooms went to other places and all these new, new people and communities cropped up. We're not still stuck in the space of techies and only photographers. We're, we're not stuck there. Um, and I think, you know, as a community manager, when I look to solve for particular issues, I'm not solving for only the people that we all know in terms of um, people on the suggested user list or power users. I am tuning in to all the people that aren't in that demographic. Those are all the people that, that need the most insight or the most connection or the most help. Um, so I just want to, I just want to like set, set that there that, that we are um, a community of all sorts of people and I think we just need to open our eyes and the possibility that there's a lot that we don't know, right? Like, like, uh, like and I say we as a, as a community because we're, I'm still investigating what, what other worlds are like there besides, you know, um, you know, power users, influencers, helpers, most vocal, right? Like, what are the what are the people that don't have those voices yet? Who are those people? Where are those people at? And um, and I think that's a more interesting problem than solving for our assumptions of what the community is like. And you said you had a question Bravo. for us. Bravo! Bravo! Good. Well done. Um, so my question, I actually asked in a in a hangout um, last week, and um, basically, you know, we're we're all coming to Google Plus for different reasons. Like maybe we joined back in the day, June 28th. Um, maybe we came here thinking that it would be the new fresh platform for us to talk about our local business or that it was the place where we were really going to strike out on our own for the first time and share our, our views on religion or politics or whatever. Um, so I would like to know, going down the line, what is it that you would like to experience on Google Plus and why? <clears throat> I'm going to start with Alan Furstenberg, and before I say also goodbye to Alan Furstenberg, um, Timothy Jordan sends his regards. Awesome! I can't wait to see Timothy again. Um, so what would you like to experience and, and why? What would I like to experience Yeah, think of me as, in, as like a fairy godmother right now. If I had like little wings, you know, what would you like to experience? That's an interesting question, and I think part of it is it's interesting because you're not asking what feature do I want. Nope. Um, and, and you're very intentionally not asking that. You're, you're asking what I want to experience. And I think part of the problem is um, I'm actually experiencing most, most of what I came to Google Plus is what I'm getting. Hmm. Um, I'm getting the, the connections that I wanted. I'm getting the fine-grained controls that I wanted as well. Um, these are the things, these are the reasons why I came here. And it, for the most part, it's what I get. Um, in a lot of ways, it, it's overwhelmed and surprised me with what I get and, and how much I get of it. Um, I think the kind of experience that I want, uh, that I want to get out of Google Plus as a whole are the honest and open interactions with people who both agree and disagree with me. All right. That's Craig right. Ship's department. Craig, you're next. What would you like to experience okay, so on Google Plus? I'll be kind of almost repeating myself, but what I would love to see, if this was a <laughs> panacea, I would, I would love to see the day when I can put my content on Google Plus and on Facebook and I get 10 times the interaction, uh, the engagement and so forth. With the, this is the exact same content, both platforms. I get 10 times the interaction on Google Plus and I can thumb my nose even more at Facebook. I still have a Facebook account by the way um, and 
I had two. I'm down to one. Um, but I get just by far, I mean, 50 times, 100 times more interaction on my content there than I do on Google+. Exact same content. And I have a lot more people have circled me on Google+. I mean, 10,000 have circled me on Google+. I only have about, I think, 1,300 or 1,600 friends on Facebook. It's not a numbers thing. All right. Think you're next, Dan. Okay. Um, I, I would say, um, with regard to Craig's thing, we, we have another guy who didn't join us tonight, unfortunately, uh, Jeff Zayas, who posts a lot of um, Native American stuff. And oh, awesome! Yeah. I do work with Native people. He's he's awesome, and and um, he found uh, not Jeff Zayas. I'm sorry, um, Harold Carey Jr. And he started his Facebook page after his Google Plus, and he has more followers on Google Plus than Facebook, but he gets more engagement on Facebook. And I'm not sure why. I'm not sure what the deal is. But I, um, th this gets to what I, I would like to see, and, and some are repetitive, if not entirely so. I would like to see more um, Google, which is famous for search and relevance. That's what they do. That's what af allow them to uh, afford to build this advertising-free for now, Google Plus. Um, I'd like to find that if someone's interested in Native American stuff, that in, in addition to the random what's hot post put in their stream and other things, that they that Google uses their algorithms to say, hey, this person is uh, interested in this, and and maybe this is someone else you'd find interesting, who's interested in sort of the same thing. I think they need to do a better job working on that. I would like to see that because. I get frustrated, and you know I'm a big fan. We're all fanboys, or we wouldn't be here, right? Fanboys and fangirls. Um, I love Google+, and I wish more people were on it. Not necessarily everyone, <laughs> but uh, that's where I, I disagree with Alan, but um, uh, affectionately so. But, but uh, th that's what I would like to see. I would like to see better local discovery. If there's some interesting person within a reasonable distance of me who um, is interested in things I'm interested in, and Google knows everything about me because I use all all Google services. I would like to uh, have that person drawn uh, by Google, uh, drawn to my attention spam, without having to actively search constantly. You know, is there anybody in Bentonville or Limeton or or Strasburg, Virginia? I would like them to just sort of randomly pop up and say, "Hey, you might yeah. find this guy interesting or this gal interesting." You know, they're, they 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 post about the same things you do. That's what I would I would so like to see differently. My one follow-up question is. How many people do you, like, sitting where you're sitting, when you say, I wish there were more people on Google+, Plus," what is your perception of, I, I'm not going to share any numbers, but what is your perception of how many people are on Google+, Plus? like, how would you measure success? Like, what number would make people feel less alone? Because I, I don't think you feel alone. But I'm just I wondering. I want to answer that I, too after Dan. Yeah, I'd like to. I want to. All right, all right. Too. So maybe yeah. I just opened up a little can of worms. But you know, like, like why, why after two years and lots of announced numbers, why do you still say that? I think that's an interesting question. Like, what makes you feel that that way? So I, w I would just I, that's my follow up question to Dan, and then I want to keep going through other people. Yeah, um, I have. Um, uh, Locally, as far as people who regularly engage with me, um, and I'm I'm a prominent local person. I'm a public figure. I, I have uh, I own the local newspaper, right? Um, so I have one person who's an active user uh, who engages on my post regularly. On Facebook, it's like over a thousand. Um, so it's from your hometown. You have one Correct. person from your home. Correct. One I have lots of great home. friends. I mean, everyone in this hangout, and now you, you're my newest Google Plus friend, right? I mean, we, we, we've been engaged before, but we haven't yeah, had yeah. A, a fun, jovial, uh, you know, experience like this um, before. So I would like to, 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 to discover more local people who regularly mm -hmm. use the product, um, who are relevant to me, especially. But frankly, even if they're not relevant to me, as far as interests, they're local, and that is a That's social kind of network. That's how you're measuring it. Is like how many of these people do I know in real life that are engaging on my posts? It doesn't have to be local. Um, someone I know, it could be someone I could meet, some a local person uh, who's interesting or whatever. And there's yeah, a, a dearth of that. 
you know, I mean, if, if someone doesn't have any interests with Pam, but lives in Menifee and is active on Google Plus, Pam would love to know that. And she shouldn't so, have to do so a I search for it. It should be in her face. Like, we've, definitely, we've definitely spent a lot of time on that idea. And so I, I, and, and I appreciate your suggestion. And I think for me, it sounds like it's, it's it, like I'm trying to really hear the essence of what you're trying to say, right? Because it's you're saying, I know one person on my Google Plus post that is from where I live locally. So maybe Google Plus, like if you were to go through your town and say, one, two, three, four, five, you have a Google Plus account. Like one in five people that you meet has a Google Plus account in your town. Like is that when it starts to feel like Google Plus has enough people on it? It's not so much how many I know. That's the issue. I'm not saying that that's how many there are, right? And some don't feel comfortable posting publicly. And I understand there's a lot of um, activity on Google Plus that isn't public that we're not aware of at all. A lot of private video calls or hangouts, you know, a lot of private messaging. A lot of people, I know a guy who's, who's a dean, is a friend of mine, and I've even told him. I said, why don't you post publicly? But he posts these interesting articles, and he's a business school dean at a university, and he posts privately. Um, so I can't sure. share it publicly. And I was like, you get, I mean, it's crazy, you know? Uh, and they're not controversial things. It's interesting well, but, but, stuff. But Dan, so what? But Dan, So he posts privately. So what? No, no, there's no yeah. problem with that. What I'm saying is I'm not exposed to that. Uh, uh, I, I just, um, if, if I hadn't circled him, I just wish, I wish it were... More people would use the service if when they logged in, they would find things that are local. Because that's at the heart of social. It's personal relationships. And uh, it could be existing or potential. And not okay. be professional or whatever. Relationships does not equal local. So, okay. So, so let, me, let me keep moving down the line. Because I definitely hear, like, you're, you're share, sharing that suggestion a lot. So I want to make time for other people, too. Because I definitely hear what you're, you're saying about the local discovery element. Gary, can you tell me uh, what you would like to experience on Google Plus? Uh, I don't want to hold you up too, too much, Natalie. I want you to see your family, and uh, I appreciate you staying with us for so long. I don't really want to ask any other questions. Okay, take your time. Except to say that I get everything out of Google I really want. What I'd like to take away is Google Plus thanks to my friends and my professional friends, and use the Google tools like Glass, Hangouts, Gmail, uh, the whole integrated platform to bring it to their life with mine and see how it makes our relationship better. And actually, I want to follow up on what Gary just said with this uh, this comment from Kadeus. Uh, I'm getting everything I want out of Google+. Plus. I would want more integration with all the Google services. I want one service, Google, not so many separated services. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. Good to know. I like that. All right, Jason, you're on. Oh, okay, well, actually, I, I just wanted to say it's not a cop-out, but I, the one thing that I've been able to take away from Google Plus to this point is that I really feel, being someone who's all the way on the other side of the world and so, again, you know, having so much distance, um, is I felt th through Google Plus, through the quality of the engagement and the quality of the content, that I really found a home. Mm -hmm. And I think from other social networks, that really meant a great deal to me. So um, there's nothing that... I couldn't get out of it um, already because, you know, not, not to disparage Dan's argument, but, you know, the local thing has absolutely no bearing to me as a user because there's this magical thing called the Internet where it really doesn't matter where you live. Um, it's the quality of the content, and that's what I, I'm, I'm continually amazed by what the users pump into the product. Uh, as a journalist and as someone who's an analyst in the media, uh, I'm very thrilled with the way you guys, like you said, you know, you guys like to surprise us and we're not just going to lay the entire business plan out for the next three years and everything like that. So, you know, you guys keep us guessing and I think that's that's very fun and it's a very interesting beat to cover. And, you know, as someone who just grew up in a place where if you wanted to be really, really into Legos or extremely into the X and O's of football and everything like that, I can be as hardcore as I want to be and I'll find somebody else out there on the on planet Earth, who's into that kind of thing, and it's okay for me to be extremely nerdy like that. So you know, it's I've kind of I found my own kind, and I no longer have to be the ugly duckling in the room, and uh, that mean that means a great deal to me. So I, I think in in short, I mean, I really found a home, and I'm I'm forever appreciative of that, and that's why I always will go to bat for Google Plus, and I'll always continue to uh, fight the good fight. Awesome, thank you so much. Thank you. All right, Michael. 
Okay, um, this was tough, but like I know, I agree with a lot that's been said before about um, it's not really there's nothing new I want from Google Plus, but um, I would say like refine and integrate like the different services. Like I wouldn't want a new feature unless it was like crazy, like this crazy awesome feature. But um, just refine things and integrate it more like videos and YouTube and that little redheadedness about them too. But um. I think the one experience I would like from Google Plus is more of a context with what I'm doing myself. Because I know a lot of different other, you know, products coming out that do context a little more. I like to see that in Google Plus. Like if I'm searching for something, something might pop up in Google Plus saying somebody else has done something I'm doing or something related to what I'm doing or currently searching that is public data. So I would just like more of a context. Something like Google Now for Google Plus. Something like mm. Google Now Plus or something. I don't know, but um, <laughs> something yeah. contextually relevant to what I'm doing short term and long term. Like my habits long term and like what I just searched for. Because I know Google Now is crazy about that. Boy, Natalie's going to steal that idea. Uh, now Plus. <laughs> now Plus. I love that. <laughs> I love the Now Plus. Um, yeah, that's, that's awesome. Um, Pam, what would you like to experience in Google Plus or with Google Plus? The the truth is is that I am extremely happy with Google Plus. I you know, I spend <laughs> I might be addicted. Maybe a Google Plus rehab. That would be great. Ditto. Ditto. I spend we can set up a community three, for that. Six and eight hours uh -oh, a day on uh -oh. Google Plus. Get it now, Alan. <laughs> Get it now. Get it now for you. <laughs> yeah, I spend a lot of time here and um um, you know, I get all the interaction and, and all the science and all the thongs I want. I, I'm, I'm happy. Did you say thongs? Like, <laughs> it's a long yes, story. she did. Long story, long story. Wait, I don't know. Wait, it's an inside joke. Long story, inside joke. No, it's not an inside joke. Look at any of her Thursday posts. And <laughs> Got it. I didn't, I didn't know this was a thing. I must be using the wrong hashtag. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Thong um, Thursday. Yeah. Thong Thursday. All right. Hashtag, hashtag Thong. Thong. You'll, hashtag join the Thong. Thong. You'll join the long list of people who have circled and then uncircled Pam on Thursday. <laughs> Got it. Well, Natalie, I, I also wanted to say please also give uh, Tim my regards, and I'm, I'm actually looking forward to seeing what he thinks of the uh, book on Google Glass that Alan and I are writing. Oh, awesome. Yeah, yeah I we're very... I will definitely share that with him, and and you nice know I, there, Jason. I wanted to you know, uh, I'll, it was interesting. So when I asked this question before, um, you know I, w I was in a hangout and people were saying, you know everything um, all over the place. Someone was saying that Google Plus allowed him to find like a global community. His community was called La Familia, and it was a community where he, through Google Plus, learned that he could do language translation and teach people language and help Latinos get closer to their own culture or wherever they were on the wherever they were in the world um, you know people would talk about how um, you know they they were also happy with Google Plus but they wanted to find more ways to integrate their business so I think this is kind of my new favorite question because I think it's it's understanding the intent and not asking for a specific solution um, I use this term of like how might we it's a, a term that we use in, in thinking about design is you're not trying to come up with the solution you're just trying to come up with the how might we um, get more people to experience an intimate video call online and then you know you just start thinking about that and every solution you come out with is right nothing is wrong and that's when you start saying that yes and philosophy like I'm trying to build on things so I think for me this is it's a really helpful part of, of incorporating design and, and different types of innovation thinking by asking you your intent and what you would like and hearing the essence of that as opposed to just getting to a very, very specific solution first. Um, it doesn't, it, I don't like pigeonholing ideas. I like just seeing where we can grow them together. Um, and with that, um, you know, I would like to say thank you so much. I'm, I think I've been on for about two almost two and a half hours and I don't it must have been the team and the good company <laughs> um, so thank you so much for keeping me 
energized. And, I'm very uh, impressed that you didn't have to excuse yourself after cow. drinking tea for two and a half hours. Natalie, um, Jason, this, this was Jason's uh, crazy idea to have you on. It was awesome. Um, and I, I got to tell you, I expected a bunch of... Um, we Stand don't have any because I've, I've covered <laughs> President Obama and and stuff, and you get a lot of we don't have any uh, announcements at the personnel announcements at this time. We don't have any product announcements at this time. In your case, I expected a lot of. Um, well, I can't really comment on that. Instead, I found, um, uh, like I said, we've engaged before, but I found a lot of uh, wit, humor, fun, and um, you're a, a wonderful ambassador for Google, and I. Uh, I, I was very pleasantly surprised at how unguarded you were, and mm. uh, just sort of taking it. You know, you know, I've I've, I've heard it all. You know, I'm ready. Um, and you did. You you were fantastic. And I know our viewers appreciate, our listeners appreciate it. And uh, I just want to thank you for taking the time to come out. This was a, a blast. And you are just a a, a a a wonderful person for doing it. And and we thank you very much for taking the time. And my apologies to your boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. We're going to watch uh, some awesome movie. I actually really, I mean, if I had time, I'd go out to the movies. I really want to go see the go see Pacific Rim again. Um, I had a lot of fun seeing Pacific Rim. I want to go see the new Wolverine movie. But, you know, one of the things that we've, um, you know, after a long day, you know, I want to sit down and I want to read. I have a stack of books right here, right? Like, here's, like, one book that I, I, carried a, I carried around. This set, This is pretty geeky. Right, or I have this really sweet book on project management. Yeah, you know. But when I get home, I'm like, man, I don't want to do that. And so we'll sit here, and, and instead of calling it watching TV, we call it watching stories. So, um, you know, we we'll we'll sit down and, and have some time to relax and be with the cat, and you know. But I think it's important, you know, as someone who who works on behalf of a community like Google Plus and works on behalf of a community like Google. To, to create a transparency as much as we can and to create an opportunity to share our, you know, a face and a, and a voice and an intimacy and, um, and deliver that in a way that I feel is, is human and understood. I, I think that when we all write on post together, tone gets lost real quick, right? We all think we're yelling at each other or everyone's being too serious. And, um, and so I think for me when you know, when, when we get into Hangouts, we get to really know each other and understand one another. And, and again, that's really important to me. And so um, thank you for the opportunity to, to share that humanness uh, with all of you. Um, because at the end of the day, when you guys see me on posts, I'm not like a robot, right? Like, I don't have some script that's posting for me. Um, I am myself. And I want you guys to know me as much as I get to know you, as much as we want to present that on the internet. You know, you guys all see a version of who I am. But, um, you know, I think, I think the honesty helps us feel like we're in this together. And, um, and so, you know, I just really appreciate everyone's very honest, honest commentary. You know, we were jumping all over each other at times, asking questions. Being like, wait, hold on a second. You know, that's real. That's real life. And that's what Google Plus is about. And Can you just do an so, Italian thing there? <laughs> I I'm a, I'm a little Latin. You yeah, did a little Sopranos. Up. Okay, just check it out. <laughs> I'm sorry. You know, um, you know, and I've I've been doing this hangout by candlelight. You know, I wasn't I wasn't gonna get away without trying to set the mood. For we were tonight. catching the romantic vibe. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Um, so yeah, so I would love to come okay. back on and again. Now I know and why I, Natalie's hangouts fill up so fast. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and uh, you know, I'd love to be on again. And and as things happen in the in the community world, I will definitely make sure to keep you, Dan, and all all of your your panelists, judges, my mentors, peeps, my peeps, your peeps, your crew, <laughs> yeah. your your pirate crew with the talking cat. That that Pam, I think you're amazing. The talking cat, craziest thing I've seen all week. Honestly. It's the most popular aspect of the panel. Yeah, it, you guys, you guys need Alan to think Alan. about putting that it, into the. Into the hangout. Uh, Especially app. because sometimes I think the cat's rolling its eyes at me. Oh yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah. Totally right? is. As I move my head, the cat's eyes move too. Yeah, that's that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, Nat. Thank you, Natalie. Hey, really thank you so awesome. much. We appreciate it. Uh, it was awesome. And Alan, I think we're that. That's it, right? Oh Lord, I hope so. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, 
uh, Natalie, it was awesome having you on. Uh, you're always welcome to come back anytime. Anytime you have something to say, or we'll you know we'll troll you and get you to come on once in a while when something happens. Troll free zone. But Absolutely. yes, and I will share all of your suggestions and ideas with the team when I get in on Monday. So thank you, and thanks to everyone who submitted questions, comments, ideas. Um, I'm again, I'm going to take those ideas uh, to the team and perhaps start implementing them. And if we do, I will definitely let you know. Especially my ideas, not so much Craig's. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you can Only the other. Put Craig's on the back burner. Okay, yeah, remember thanks, folks, Mon uh, Monday night at ten o'clock Eastern. Hang out. You and Sheila, right? Oh yeah, get ready for some spam from Craig. Let me tell you. <laughs> oh yeah, right. oh, I'm not gonna and, spam her. I'm and Craig's first, Craig's first message on, to you is gonna the be notifications. I got it. Some night like when Dan's door. not here, you can be a substitute moderator. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Craig's first message to you is to uh, get Dan the co a copy of that project management book because he needs one. Um, <laughs> thank you all so much for watching. Google Plus Week is every Friday night, 8:30 p.m. Eastern, 5:30 p.m. Pacific. Our Android Week is Monday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, 6 p.m. Pacific. We want to thank you all very much for tuning in, for watching, for listening after the fact, whatever, for commenting. Your questions are awesome. I'm going to ask one thing from from Natalie. Um, will you at least glance at the comments and questions we didn't get to so folks didn't waste their time? She'll do that. She'll do that for us. So let's see. You want me to go through my post right now? No, not now. Not now. I mean, like at some point oh. soon. Oh, okay. Just for folks who oh. had a question or comment, just to, to, you know, she's like, she'll take a family quick time. Remember? Oh no, no, yeah. not tonight. Not, yeah. not tonight. But at some point in the next 24, 48, 72, whatever hours, or some point in the next two weeks. <laughs> she'll, Monday. She'll, Monday she'll, um, morning at nine fifteen. Yeah. yeah. So uh, just take a quick have... glance for questions we missed because of time. But thank you so much, I will. folks. I I love answering all the way plus mentions. I love sitting on posts and talking. I'm actually going to be gone this weekend. I'm going on a trip with one of my best friends. So I will get to uh, speaking into the comments and to the posts on Monday. Awesome. Thank you all very much. Thanks awesome. to the panel. Thanks for J to Jason in Guam, um, a U.S. territory. Um, <laughs> for, for, uh, Thanks a lot, Natalie. You're, you're, a, you're a total professional and a total sweetheart. Thanks. You all have, have a fun. Care. Everyone have a safe Alan trip home. Take care, right. and be sure to circle me. Be sure to circle <laughs> me. <laughs>